Hey guys, what's up? It is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Glad to have everybody along. And I'm going to try and make this really quick today so we can jump right into all the stuff we've got planned for you. First, we are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Today is Thursday. So what I want you to do is start to think about your weekend, Saturday and Sunday morning. You've got college football and NFL football, and you've got Sammy's Restaurant and Bar with that amazing brunch from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So you can watch football all day long, play blackjack, poker, and have that incredible menu at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar at Seven Mile Casino. Let me hustle through a bunch of these things today because I want to keep on asking you to support our sponsors, but by the same token, I really want to get to the show. Hey, DraftKings, the NBA is back, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an authorized sports betting partner of the NBA, is back as well. And the key to victory is a strong starting five. So new customers can bet just $5. And if you win, this is on any NBA team to win, $5 on any NBA team to win. Like if you would have had last night Oklahoma City over the Lakers, you bet $5 on any NBA team to win. If that team wins, you get $200 in free bets, 200 bucks. So here's the real quick and easy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use our promo code. That's kind of the most important part of it for us. Use our promo code, great friends. Bet just $5 on any NBA team to win in that game. And if you win, if your team wins, you get $200 in free bets. That's pretty incredible. So use our promo code, great friends, at the DraftKings Sportsbook. It's an authorized sports betting partner of the NBA. You must be 21 or older. It's in New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit. $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. But again, real important here, and that is you bet five to potentially win 200 in free bets, but you need to use our promo code GREATFRIENDS when you download the DraftKings app. All right, moving on. I Thrive MD. I literally spoke to Dr. Samir Damani this morning at 7.30 a.m. I didn't want to tell Dr. Damani, yo, I was at the Dead & Company last night. I didn't get home till 12.30, but I had a call with him at 7.30 this morning. Listen. I Thrive MD, I'm talking to Dr. Damani about the possibility of extending this 50% deal. And he's like, should we do it? Should we not do it? I'm like, doctor, let's get guys in. Let's get their testosterone levels checked. Let's give them three months at 50% savings. Let's get everybody through Thanksgiving, through December, Christmas, New Year's, into the new year, into 2022. Let's get everybody going healthy and let's see if we can't get everybody to not just come in for that 50% savings, but then stay with us long-term because there are so many other things that iThriveMD can do for you for your long-term health. Go to iThriveMD.com slash Kaplan, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. Make an appointment now. I'm telling you, I'm working on it. But for now, you got to get in before October's over. And when I say get in, make an appointment, okay? Three months, instead of $289 a month, $145 a month. Your first three months at 50% off if you're feeling depressed, tired, weak, you can't get it done in the bedroom, your testosterone is likely low, come to iThriveMD, game changer at half price. Uh, oh, hey, this is the last couple of days for Tory Holistics and our promo code boobies, B-O-O-O-B-I-E-S. We change our promo code at the beginning of the new month, so that'll be Monday. So you've got 20% savings when you spend $75 or more at Tory Holistics, spend $100 or more, and they're going to give you a $20 gift card. So if you spend 100 bucks. They're going to give you a $20 gift card and you're going to save 20%. It's like saving $40, okay, on a $100 purchase. Toryholistics.com. Use our promo code boobies, B-O-O-O-B-I-E-S. All right, let's get things going today. It is a Thursday afternoon. We got a great show. Let's get started. Friends, what's happening? It is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. We come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. And don't forget, hey, Saturday and Sunday, you're looking for a place to watch college football, NFL football? Well, Sammy's Restaurant and Bar does a brunch from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. You could be sitting there all day long watching college football, NFL games, playing poker or blackjack, looking at that incredible view of the Bay of Chula Vista, and it's just minutes from downtown San Diego, Seven Mile Casino and sevenmilecasino.com. All right, we're just getting onto the airwaves of the Mightier 1090, blasting 50,000 watts throughout Southern California, home-based in San Diego, 
broadcasting north through Orange County, through Los Angeles County, and even further north into Ventura, up into Santa Barbara. So glad to have everybody along who's a radio listener with us this afternoon. Hey, the heart and soul, the YouTubers, everybody that's in our YouTube chat, I know it's early in the show, you're just getting on, and uh, and we're just going to start putting people in to our YouTube chat. To all of the great friends who are in YouTube, glad to have you guys here. Make sure you give a thumbs up. Uh, come on down below and comment. Visit with our sponsors. Lots to do on our YouTube channel. And uh, and to everybody that's going to be catching up to us tonight on television, Channel 4 San Diego is our home base, Your View, the Cox Your View Network. But we've got Channel 4 in San Diego, Orange County's Channel 118, Palos Verdes' is Channel 118, and all the way north in Santa Barbara, we're on Channel 4. We're on TV from 7 to 8 p.m. tonight, so catch up with us. In fact, last night, I was uh, heading down to Chula Vista for the Dead & Company show. And a bunch of buddies of mine wanted to stop at a sports bar and jump in and watch the Laker game and watch a little of the World Series game, have a quick quick bite, and then head down. So we did. We stopped in uh, Claremont Mesa somewhere. I'm not exactly sure why we stopped there. But anyway, we're in this sports bar, and this dude comes up to me, and he's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, good, how are you? He's like, um, hey, you know, I used to be a daily radio listener. And I said, oh, used to be, past tense. He's like, well, yeah, you know what I do now? I said, no idea. He said, I watch the show on Channel 4 every night. I'm like, you're kidding me. I'm like, so you used to be a radio listener, and now you're a Channel 4 San Diego television viewer. And he's like, yeah, my day has changed. I'm not in the car at the exact same time. So when I get home, I turn you guys on. So it always fascinates me how people find us on television. Channel 4 San Diego, it's still a great channel location. People turn on their TV. It goes to Channel 2. Put on the guide. Two channels north. There we are. Channel 4 San Diego from 7 to 8 p.m. And, of course, you can always get us on all the audio podcast platforms. All right, look, we're just getting rolling here on a Thursday. A lot to get to. Here's some thoughts that I have. One, tonight is Green Bay versus Arizona. So this is probably the best Thursday night football game that I can remember in a really long time, at least on paper before the game, the matchup of a 7-0 and Arizona team that I have not seen enough of. You know, I, I saw them beat up on the Rams, and that was a very impressive win, but it's really the only time I've had a chance to sit down and watch Arizona play. So through seven weeks, I've only seen Arizona play one complete game, and in that complete game, they annihilated the Rams. So I think that Arizona's good, but I'm not, I'm not well-versed. So tonight, I'm really looking forward to seeing Arizona against Green Bay. But what's so weird about this game, and we talked about it yesterday, Green Bay's got a whole bunch of guys out of this game, including their top two wide receivers due to COVID, their defensive coordinator due to COVID. On the other side, Arizona now is apparently going to lose J.J. Watt for the entire season. And let me tell you something. That is super frustrating. If you're Arizona and you got J.J. Watt from Houston, and he's turned into kind of one of the leaders of your team, one of the voices of your team. And I watched J.J. Watt on these NFL films up and down the sideline, yelling and screaming at the other team. Hey, hey, don't don't make excuses. Don't talk about injuries. Don't say that we're just the Arizona Cardinals. How about we're just better? Those were his words. We're just better. I love that J.J. Watt talks a lot. But man, how frustrating would it be if you're Arizona you went out and got this guy. He's become a huge, important part of your team, and all you got out of him is seven weeks because it looks like he's going to have season-ending surgery. That is really frustrating. So for tonight's game, 7-0 and Arizona versus 6-1 and Green Bay, so many guys out, whether it's through COVID or through injury. But I, I will say, I am still looking forward to the matchup. I'll check that out tonight. I mentioned that I was watching this Laker game last night in a sports bar. What a disaster. Now, I suppose you might think, don't go judging the Lakers five games into the season. Okay, I won't. But I'll tell you this, through five games, they suck. Okay, they're terrible. And maybe in 15 games, we'll look back and go, well, they were working things out. They were just trying to get to know each other. Maybe, maybe we will. But last night against Oklahoma City, they stunk. They had a 26-point lead and they blew it. And then at the end, when they had when Oklahoma City had a five point lead, there was, I don't know, under five seconds to go. Oklahoma City stole a pass, went in for a dunk, put the game out of reach, and Russell Westbrook, I mean, like to me, complained and cried on the court, like, hey, you don't do that. You don't dunk on us when the game's out of reach. And then in the press conference, he's like, There are certain things in sports you just don't do, like flipping bats in baseball. I'm like, hey, Russ, 
Have you been watching baseball? Because everybody's flipping bats, and we all are here for it. So we'll talk about that coming up as well. So a lot of football on the mind, some basketball on the mind. I did watch a little bit of the World Series last night, but not much. Not much. Not really into it. I'm not really into the World Series right now. Baseball season's long over for me. So, all right, listen, we're just getting rolling. We're just getting going here on a Thursday afternoon. Let me say hello to mi hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla. He's repping the 805, Oxnard, California's favorite son, Ventura County in La Casa, and a man who's here at work, everybody. But, man, he got a lot going on in his life. He's trying to move. He just closed on a brand-new condo. Guy's going to need some days off. Here he is, the highly preoccupied, grande. Hola, como esta, amigo? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing fantastic. I was going to start with the Lakers, but now I feel like we're going to get to it later, so I'll just save it because I guarantee we'll get to it later. Um, I'll start off with this, something different. You just call it like Padilla's like TV corner or something now because I'm all in on TV. I have started Succession on HBO just, Max. You're starting from the beginning? I'm on episode three, Okay, season one. Mm -hmm. Are you caught up? You done? No. Watch. So here's the thing. So I, I watched season one. I loved it. I was into season two, and in the middle of it, um, I got distracted with something else. So they're in season three right now, right? Yeah, it just started. Yeah. So I need to get back in in the middle of season two. And now that you're telling me that you're into it and now that you're going to binge it, I'll probably get back in. I'll, I might even start at the beginning of season two again. Just Yeah. Try so, yeah. I, you know, I, I watched Billions for a long time. I, I stopped watching Billions. It's, yeah, it's me lost too. me emotionally. Yeah, um, me Showtime too. shows do that, by the way. Showtime well, shows. What's what happened with Ray Donovan? Hot. Dude, yeah, Californication, yeah, Shameless, like those mm -hmm. shows, Dexter, like they come out hot and just they keep them going for too long. And I think that's where Billions is at. So anyways, I was a little hesitant about doing another like I was assuming it was like some sort of financial show. Obviously, I know what the title is, so I get the premise of the show, but I'm all in, man. I'm all in. I don't know. Like the the Macaulay Calkins brother, the, the little brother in, in, yeah. in the show. He's Fantastic. Hilarious. I love yeah, that hilarious. guy. Greg the Egg, hilarious. Um, I don't even know if that's his actual name, but it's Greg. Um, it is so far three episodes in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm glad that I uh, I, f I finally decided to watch this thing. Like, yeah, it but is unlike you know, you say Showtime shows. You know, I I I bailed on Ray Donovan. Mm -hmm. Um, I probably was. I, I don't know how many seasons of Ray Donovan there were, but I was probably two or three in, and then I I I bailed probably a couple into the next season. Succession is an HBO show. Right. So um I I billions I'm with you. I kind of got lost. But success success. You watch is, Homeland too? Homeland is I that still going on? I, I haven't seen any new Homelands in a really long time. But yeah, I, I actually thought the year after the first season of Homeland they'd never be able to keep it going. They probably had another two seasons at least. And I loved yeah. Homeland. Loved Homeland. Yeah. But I should research and find out when it comes back. You know what? Again, I haven't started morning show yet. Have you started the morning show? Oh, season two's awful. Oh, really? So far, how far into it are you? I'm caught up. Oh, totally so caught up. I'm still and, on zero. Uh, it's bad. I'm on zero. I haven't even begun the morning show yet. Yeah, I don't know. Like season one, they had this like clear plan and structure, and 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 now I feel like they're trying to toy with us emotionally, like mm -hmm. where they're trying to make us feel bad for vic for not victims for like the like Steve Carell and mm -hmm. and Jennifer Aniston characters, and I'm just not vibing with it. Yeah. So I'm not a big fan. Well, I'm glad you're watching Succession. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up from season two because again i got i i at some point i stopped and everybody's raving about season three you know how i binge sopranos pretty quickly because mm -hmm. i just had it on like while i was working mm -hmm. i'm re-watching for whatever reason uh game of thrones from the beginning wow geez where Dad. do i find all the time no i don't i'm not like sitting on my couch it's just like i literally have a big ipad next to me while i work all day so it's just like background noise instead of music. I just throw mm -hmm. TV shows on. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, dude, Game of Thrones was so good. Like, <laughs> it was so good, man. Like, it was so good. I saw a TikTok and it explained it so greatly. Like, has a show ever left such a terrible taste in your mouth that you no longer care about any? So, like, Game of Thrones could have been like another Star Wars, right? Like as far as money goes, they could have spinned it off into a million different things and just created this universe of of awesomeness. But the final season was so terrible that I don't care about this House of Dragon show at all. But God damn, dude. 
Game of Thrones. It's season one and two. So good. So good. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about succession. You're three in so and far, you say so you're all in. Okay. Um, here he is. Let's say good afternoon to this young fellow right here. He's six foot seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, the hot take machine, and a man known internationally to the ladies as the Brown Saw. This brother brings a street cred from the seven mile casino podcast shed. Here he is, repping the south side of Chicago, big brown. JB, the Brown Man, John Browner in the house. Big Brown? You know, I got a hit list, Russell Westbrook, today. Oh, so we're starting there. I really do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to start there. I got to start there. I love Russell Westbrook. I'm a huge fan. The energy, the passion, the fashion, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. I love all of it. Bro. You can't be the person to tell someone what they can't do at the end of a game. Again, I love you. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. But you literally chase rebounds at the end of the game to get triple doubles. Like, So you can't tell a person not to do something because you're offended. Like, Basketball's got a lot of unwritten rules. And you've been breaking them for the last four years chasing triple doubles and everybody in the league knows it and so for you to get mad at Darius Baisley a young guy who by the way just came just overcame a 24 point lead to beat the Lakers at home having your best game of your career against the Lakers I'm dunking that ball too dog I'm sorry. You have to see me in the parking lot. I'm dunking that. Well, I'm windmilling. I'm doing a cartwheel. I'm doing off the backboard to myself. Whatever I want to do, I earned this victory. Okay. If you didn't want him to do it, y'all shouldn't have thrown the ball over at the end of the game. You shouldn't. Have. You should just roll it in and let the clock run out. Like, maybe, I don't... maybe you should hit one of one of the many three point opportunities you had. Maybe maybe Carmelo Anthony shouldn't be throwing up air balls from you three point a, range. Frank Vogel takes a timeout. You come out of the timeout. You shoot a three within three seconds of the shot clock. I don't think that's the play, bro. So I, I really, I just don't think you're the person to deliver that message to that particular young man. Are you correct about civility and respect in the game? Yeah, you are. You're correct about it, but you're not the messenger because you don't exercise that. So I get you mad. I get you mad because that's kind of your thing, and I like that about you. But you're going to have to let that one go. I, I, listen, I, I really thought that Russell Westbrook last night to get in the face of a young player. We'll talk more about it. We'll get into greater detail. But to get into the face of a young player, like how dare you dunk the basketball? The the, the thought process apparently was that uh, at this point, Oklahoma City's got a five-point lead. There's about a second and a half left in the game. The Lakers are inbounding the ball. They're not going to win. They've already blown their 26-point lead, and they've humiliated themselves. As James Worthy said on the Spectrum postgame show last night, no respect at all, none for Oklahoma City. The Lakers showed up with no respect for an inferior opponent, had them beaten down by 26 points, and let those young players crawl back. And James Worthy was like, you know what I would do? I wouldn't put those guys on a charter flight. i put them on a bus and bust them back to L.A. and say, until you guys start to show your opponents some respect, we're not going to treat you like the Lakers. We'll treat you like a bunch of minor leaguers because that was minor league, Bush league crap last night. And if I'm a young team like Oklahoma City and I got players that no one's ever heard of, dude, I'm making my name against a team like yes. the Lakers, especially when I have a chance when LeBron's not playing. You know? I mean, for Russell Westbrook to get done and say, how dare you dunk that ball? You know, it made no sense to me. I was like, dude, if you did it, it'd be no problem. If if the Lakers were up by five with one and a half seconds to go and Oklahoma City inbounded the ball and Russell picked it off and took it in for a dunk, it's okay. It's the Lakers. They're allowed to do that. They're entitled to this this championship this year. If, but, he, needed, if he needed that two points for a triple-double to give him 10 points, he'd have done it. He'd have stole the ball and dunked it. And, and that would have been that. 
Yeah. Uh, Alex, what do you think, man? Yeah, I know you said we're going to go deeper, and we'll talk about it. We'll show some highlights. We'll, we'll, we'll dig deeper into this, but you know Browner is going to start there. Yeah, no, I'm not going to defend Russell Westbrook. Like, I think I'm all aboard showboating and, and talking trash. And I'm the guy that hates the taunting rule in, in uh, football. I'm the guy that hates unwritten rules in baseball. I'm not going to go defend Russell Westbrook. I actually find it incredibly – I'm not going to lie, dude. Like, I was all in on Russ. And when he said that last night, I was like, you're that guy? I had no idea. Like, you're that guy? I don't want to root for that guy. You know what I mean? Like, as just as a fan, nothing analytical, nothing from, from any sort of perspective, just as a fan of the team. I don't want to root for that guy. I hate that guy. I've always hated that guy in sports. You know, like have fun. This is a a young ass team that just kicked your ass. Like, let them have fun. I, I don't know. I hate. I I hated everything about that. What he did, and then what he said in the post game press yeah. conference. Because Anthony Davis was looking at him like, "Fool, you serious? You really gonna say that right now?" Yeah. I feel like I feel like the the Lakers are so entitled. Yes. Like like, hey, we built this team. We got all these stars. We're going to be the future champions. We're entitled to this this championship this year. And if somebody showboats to us, that's not cool. But if we did it to somebody else, we're entitled to do that because we're the LA Lakers. Yeah, this is going to be two, go one of two ways. And I, I really genuinely believe this. this is going to go one of two ways. A, they'll eat their humble pie and realize that ain't nobody going to lay down for you guys just because who you, your names are. And then that they'll, they'll take their ass kickings and then they'll move on and they'll move forward and become better of it. That's one or two. This thing's going to collapse and they are all past their prime. We know this except Anthony Davis. And I would say that this could easily, you could easily see a mid season trade. Yes. You could easily see a mid season trade. If this thing doesn't turn around by, I don't know, January to me, this is all early though. I mean, you look around the NBA, dude, I mean, the Suns are one and three, the Clippers are one and three, the Nets are two and three, the like, Timberwolves are three and one, right? The, 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 the Bulls Kings, are four and oh, right? So it's just like, it's early. You know, basketball really starts later on in the season, but these these wins will come back later and bite you in the ass when you lose to the Thunder, who haven't won a game all season. But I'm not panicking yet, but I do think that the Lakers are eating a big old piece of humble pie right now because there's been a lot of quotes. LeBron doing the whole respect thing or whatever he said the well, other he, day. He told, what was the kid's name from campaign. Uh, campaign. Yeah. Campaign. campaign? Be humble. Yeah. Right. Right. So I think these guys are pretty... Uh, I, I, I agree. I guess the word is entitled, Scott. Um, I would say that um, they were expecting to be a lot better early on, but they're clearly it's going to take time. I mean, it's a whole revamped roster. You have two guys and right now one guy um, playing from last year. That's it. It's a whole new roster. Frank, Frank Vogel struggling figuring this out. The team is struggling, struggling to figure it out. They have a lot of issues because it's a completely new roster. When you don't have your your captain and the go to guy on your roster, I don't care who you're playing. It's it's a you got to figure it out, man. Like, you know what's amazing to me is is that every time I turn on a national radio show, um, and seriously, like every national radio show, it can be Keyshawn in the morning, it can be Dan Patrick, it can be Colin Coward, it can be Rich Eisen on ten ninety, it can it can be any of these national guys. When they talk NBA, they talk Lakers. When I watch any of the talk shows, the, uh, you know, what's the Stephen A morning show, um, first take, or when I watch undisputed and I, I say, watch these shows, especially a lot of it is social media. Everything is Lakers. In other words, when people, they're the only team that cares about nationally, well, that's what I'm getting at is that they're the Cowboys of basketball. They yeah. are the Cowboys of basketball. They're yeah, the Yankees of baseball. I mean, it's right. just, or, you know what I mean? Like the Dodgers, yeah. like people everywhere are not talking about the Dodgers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to talk baseball nationally, you're talking Yankees. It is what it is. Like, listen, like, dude, I'm not going to come in here and, like, try and bring the Nets into it like I did last year because I thought, that, you know, that was last year's play. But it's like they're two and three, too, and no one's talking about it. And James yeah. Harden is a very average player with these new rules, and no one's talking about mm. it. Like, James Harden with the new rules that they've implemented for the referees is average. When he's not on the line for 20 times a game, he's average. So I think there's... You look around, man. There's a lot of interesting basketball stories. The Bulls being 4-0, the Warriors being 4-0. No one's talking about that because the only no. thing that matters is the Lakers collapse because it's right. juicy. Well, right, because that's what everybody's rooting for the Laker collapse because right. they if went I wasn't out, a Laker fan, I'd be rooting for that too. Right. Yeah. This team's not likable. Yeah. 
All right, we'll talk more about it again as the afternoon goes on. A lot of NFL stuff we want to get to, a lot of college football stuff we want to jump into as well, and uh, and we're just getting rolling. It is a Thursday afternoon. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studio, sevenmilecasino.com, Sammy's Restaurant and Bar at, Sammy, at, at Seven Mile Casino. The brunch, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays, perfect for watching college and NFL football. We're just getting going. Stay with us. we got a great show coming your way. Stick around. This is Kaplan and Crew. Great friends, it is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. We come to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. Okay, we got a great show coming up for you today. Let me tell you what's going to happen on today's show. Uh, Harrison Fagan is the managing editor of silverscreenandroll.com. He's going to talk to us about the Lakers and this 2-3 and three start and what we were just talking about, which was why does America root against the Lakers, particularly here in the early part of the season? We'll get to that story coming up. And our longtime intern from Syracuse University, Cameron Azir, is here today, and he'll have his college football report, which will include a monster game this weekend for San Diego State. San Diego State versus Fresno State this weekend. What a game. I was talking about it last night with a buddy of mine as we were heading down to this concert, and I was explaining to him, that we're all kind of waiting for that San Diego State collapse, that one game where they've they've gotten through the first six or seven and they're unbeaten, and you're you're kind of hoping for the the perfect season and to make some noise nationally, especially the year before they move into their new stadium. But we're all sort of waiting. When's it going to happen? And I can remember a few years ago, Alex. What year do you think it was when San Diego State had a real team? Like we thought they were they were the kind of team that could be a disruptor, and they wound up losing. Mm-hmm. I want to say like back-to-back home games back at the old Qualcomm Stadium to Fresno State and Boise State. Do you remember that year? Oh, was that the Rashad Penny year? It could have been. I just remember. I have to look it up. I I remember me and Billy Ray and Coach Steve Fisher. Steve Fisher. I remember all of us being in the parking lot at Qualcomm Stadium, tailgating and partying because everybody was there because it was a big game. 2017. Okay. The Aztecs were 6-0. Yeah, and then they had back-to-back games at home to yep. Boise and Fresno, yep. and lost both of them. Okay, and it was the Rashad Penny year. Okay, so you see, this is what exact my memory is like ninety-five percent of the way there. There were back-to-back losses inside the conference, and that was the year because of Penny and uh, you know the two thousand-yard rushing season, and previous to that, Donnell Pumphrey had really helped put San Diego State more on the map nationally. Uh, I think even the year before 16, that might have been the year that they beat Houston in the Las Vegas Bowl. So there was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of excitement about Aztec football at that time. And I remember, wow, they're playing Boise State. They're undefeated. Now we're starting to generate some electricity in town. Let's get out to the game. And they wound up losing that game to Boise. Then they lost to Fresno, and the whole season went down the drain. The only two games that season that Penny did not break 100 yards was those two games. How about that? And that's genuinely my biggest concern is this weekend. Like, what if San Diego State cannot run the ball against Fresno State. Well, we know they can't throw the ball. Yeah. You know? So we're all kind of waiting. <laughs> San Diego State 7 and 0, Fresno State 6 and 2, and I was explaining it to a buddy of mine last night that San Diego State has wins against teams from the Pac-12. So who did they beat? They beat Arizona, Utah, and, Huma, and Utah. So two really great wins for San Diego State. From Fresno State, they beat UCLA after UCLA had beat LSU, but then Fresno State lost to Hawaii. And UCLA had crushed Hawaii. What I'm getting at is, is that this game, even though Fresno State has kind of a bad loss on their record, they they've lost two games. Do you know who their second loss was to? Um, Yeah, it just happened. I think, um, yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, but prior to that, who who else did Fresno State lose to? Do you know Oregon? Okay, so Oregon you can live with. Fresno State barely too. Right, losing to to Hawaii that's a really bad loss. But at least San Diego State has Fresno State on the schedule which Fresno State has a quality win over UCLA and had just barely lost to to Oregon. So if you beat Fresno State, it's not going to elevate you significantly in the standings or, or in the, the, the coaches poll, but at least it's a quality win, but it'd be a devastating loss. So San Diego State is on my mind. Uh, Cameron will be here later on with our college football report. So Harrison will be here with a Laker report. Cameron will be here with a college football report, and we got a great show coming your there's way. There's a big, uh, I think there's a big SEC game this weekend too. I think it's Georgia, Florida. You got Michigan, Michigan State. 
Um, there was another matchup that I wanted to. Uh, oh yeah, Ole Miss Auburn. There's like big SEC games, but the big big one is Michigan Michigan State. That is huge game, and Michigan I want to say is like number seven in the country. Michigan State's like eight or nine. Six, six versus eight. Michigan six and yeah, yeah. Six versus eight. All right, so yeah. you see, we're, we're close, man. We're close. Ohio Michigan State Penn State. Yeah, you're forgetting Pitt Miami. Mm, I don't think we're forgetting that. I think Miami's awful. You got to win that game, dude. Yeah, got to win. Gotta win that. You got to win. Miami's game, awful, bro. dude. They're like Miami is is the my biggest. Like, remember, I want to get rid of preseason polls. Miami is every year ranked yeah. top twenty five, and they never finish top twenty five. They're three and four, man. You better win that game. San Diego State would beat Miami They're right bad. now. Yeah, you got to win that game. That you got to win that game. But that's exactly the point. That's just how San Diego State has to beat Fresno State, my guys, Pitt. You got to beat Miami. You know, you because you these are the kinds of games in a college football season that screw up your whole year. How much mm-hmm. you want to bet this? Yeah, I'll bet you anything you want right now. Pitt beats Miami, mm-hmm. and San Diego State beats Fresno. Mm-hmm. Both, who's a better win? I would say Fresno beating Fresno is a better win, right? I, agree. I guarantee yes. you, Pitt still jumps higher in the rankings than San Diego State. Well, right. I mean, look what Pitt did last week. Pitt beat Clemson. Clemson wasn't ranked. They're they jumped terrible. San Diego State. Right, and they jumped over San Diego State. I know it's 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 an ACC Power Five thing yeah, versus Miami's uh, awful. Yeah. yeah, Miami's awful. It doesn't matter. You beat them, you're going to jump, get a higher jump than San Diego State will. Yeah. Hey, listen, we'll talk college football as the afternoon goes on. Cameron Azir, our intern at Syracuse University, will have his college football report, and we'll get there coming up. I want to turn our attentions though directly to the NFL, and I want to say this in advance before I get deeper into this story. This is exactly why I had been saying for years that the city of San Diego should be ashamed of itself for not suing the NFL when the Chargers moved. Now, look, suing the NFL wasn't going to bring the Chargers back. okay, And it wasn't even going to bring the NFL back. But suing the NFL on behalf of the city of San Diego, the intent would be at least collect something for the damages that have been done. And nobody in the city of San Diego had, I'm going to, I'm going to use past tense, had the guts, the courage, the balls, the El Cajones. Wow. No, nobody in this city had the courage to sue the NFL. You are wrong there. Am I? Yes. Oh. There was one man that wanted to sue the NFL in San Diego. Wanted to. Boltman. Right. That's right. Boltman. Boltman. Boltman would call the radio show all the time. Leave us alone about it. And was like, dude, I got this attorney. He's an anti-trust attorney in New York. He's been successful in suing the NFL in the past. And the city of San Diego needs to sue the NFL. And I agree. The city of San Diego should be following the city of St. Louis, and they should be suing the NFL. But nobody here had the guts to do it. And the fact of the matter is they should have sued the NFL not to get the NFL back, not to bring the Chargers home. Forget about all that. Okay, those ships have sailed. They should have sued the NFL just to try and find a way to get some money out of their ass to make it just slightly painful for the NFL to have moved out of San Diego the way they did St. Louis. People in St. Louis had the guts to go after the NFL, and now it's getting ugly. Well, Scott, yeah, you're much more in tune with with maybe with law than I am. Um, if St. Louis is successful, which they so far have been, they've won every motion, they've won every whatever. Does that set precedent to then for San Diego to possibly then jump in, or is it too late? I don't think it's too late, but I would say to Mayor Todd Gloria, "Hey, Mr. Mayor." You used to rock those Charger socks and show up at our events and pull up your pants and go, check me out. I'm Mr. Charger fan. Well, you know what? Be Mr. San Diego fan and go after the NFL and don't let them just walk away for free. Make them pay for what the city of San Diego has lost. How and I'll get deeper it? into this. Okay. Oh, well, no, no, my... Go ahead, Browner. No, my question is, how much are they suing for? What is St. Louis trying to recoup out of this? Because that would determine whether or not we go through the the time of actually doing it. There was conflicting uh, uh, reports in the article yesterday that ESPN wrote. Some think it's in the billions, and many Mm -hmm. say it's in the hundreds of millions. Well, listen, I don't care if it's 10 million, 100 million, a billion, or 5 billion. Anything is better than zero. Make it hurt for them. 
make them spend money on lawyers, make them acknowledge that what they did was wrong uh, financially. You know, they wronged the community of San Diego. So make them pay for it. And I'll, I, let me, I, there's more details and I want to get to it here in just one second, but I, I do want to interrupt for one second and say this, Hey guys, I want to talk about I thrive MD for one second. And I want to tell you guys that at 7 30 AM this morning, I was on a call with Dr. Samir Damani from I thrive MD. And he said, um, Hey, you know, things are really going well. Um, in offering this 50% off discount on testosterone treatments, the phones have really begun to ring quite a bit and we're making a lot of appointments and we're bringing in a lot of guys that are great friends. So I want to say thank you, first of all, because this is a great sponsor of ours and we want them to st stay with us for a really long time. So that's our selfish motivation from, from your perspective. I want you to be strong, healthy and live a long life. And I thrive MD can certainly help with your longevity and, uh, and your wellness. So I want it to work for both parties, all three parties, us, you, them. So Dr. Damani was like, listen, I don't know how long we can keep this 50% thing going though. He goes, cause it's, you know, it's a big deal. And I said, but doc, look, we told people in the third, second to third week of October, they can get 50% off testosterone treatments for the first three months. $289 a month is what it normally costs for testosterone treatments. They've taken it down to $145, but we told you, you had to make an appointment in the month of October. I said, doctor, why don't we try and extend it? through Thanksgiving, because everybody's life is going to change. You're going to get in November, you know, first we're going to have Halloween this weekend. Then it's going to be Thanksgiving next month. Then it's going to be time off of work. And then it's going to be Christmas holidays, new years. And then, you know, you're into 2022. So I said, doc, why don't we extend this through Thanksgiving? And I've got the doc's word that if you make an appointment at I thrive MD now through Thanksgiving, he will honor the 50% savings for testosterone treatments. So here's what you do. Make an appointment. Go to ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. Easier is call this phone number 858-240-1497. 858-240-1497. Make an appointment now between now and Thanksgiving. The first three months of treatment are going to be 50% savings. So you're going to get your testosterone levels checked for free. If your testosterone is low because you're feeling depressed or foggy or weak or you can't get the job done in the bedroom, fellas, let's get your testosterone levels checked. If you need a treatment of testosterone, 50% savings. This has been the call to action that has gotten a lot of guys to go, you know, I've heard Kaplan talk about this for a couple of years and I've thought about it, but I didn't know what the pricing was. Now I'm finally ready and motivated because the price is so inexpensive. iThriveMD.com slash Kaplan, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. Guys, make that appointment. Get in and see the docs at iThriveMD. And let's make sure you're healthy and strong and feeling good going into 2022 at I Thrive MD. All right, let's get back to this story. This story blew up yesterday. Here's here's a, an encapsulation for those of you that weren't following. Good word. Thank you very much. I tried. I wasn't really sure if I was going to be able to get it out. And I wasn't really sure again? if it was the right word. You know Can what I mean? Can you say it again? Encapsulization. That's pretty good, man. Is it, is it a real word? I'm not even really 100% positive. No, but it sounded good. I'm convinced. I I know. It sounds good, right? Here, here's how the story goes for those of you that haven't been paying attention. Here's how it goes. The NFL owners are all meeting, right? And Stan Kroenke from the Rams lets all the owners know, hey, guys, listen. The city of St. Louis is suing the NFL. Not me, Stan Kroenke. Us, the NFL. Stan Kroenke has indemnified the other 31 owners. <laughs> On fire player. That's another nice word, right, Brown? Yeah. Another word I don't I'm know not if you're sure. Even I... Using them right, but damn. Oh, you're yeah. going for ISO right now, boy. It's yeah, isolation dog. offense. You fool James Harden right now. Snap <laughs> <Not> back. Clean <laughs> the legs. Yeah. I don't even know what these words mean, but I'm using them, brother. Keep them going. You're on fire. Yeah, right. So, so Kroenke tells the the now this is going back years ago. Uh, when the city of St. Louis sues us, I will indemnify the league. What does that mean? Essentially, what it means is Kroenke is going to pay the legal bills. Okay. Now, the story goes that the legal bills are costing the league, therefore Kroenke, billions of dollars. Not hundreds of millions. The number I yesterday that was reported was legal fees in the billions. Now, he spent $6 billion on a stadium. I don't know how the legal fees have gotten up to 
upwards of a billion, but that sounds like a lot of money to me for legal fees. Ah, that sounds like BS. That sounds like a misprint. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like he's got like divorce attorneys working on his his case, you know. 24 hours take, a day. They take all what is a divorce? True. 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 It is. So here's essentially the story, though. Whatever the numbers are, Cronky is paying the legal fees. Jerry Jones isn't. Bob Kraft isn't. The Mara family, the Rooney family, the Spanos family, Mark Davis, none of them. They're not paying the legal fees. It's Cronky who's paying the legal fees. But here's the deal. Cronky is now telling the other NFL owners, this is a bunch of nonsense. The city of St. Louis is suing us. I'm paying all the legal fees. And the way the story is being reported, and this is interesting, is that there's a feeling that somebody, and the, they, they didn't put a name with it, but I think we could all figure out who they're talking about. It's either Spanos or Davis or both. Somebody provided the city of St. Louis, this is many years ago, with information that said that the Rams organization was violating the relocation rules. So remember, the Chargers and the Raiders were trying to get a stadium built together, and the competing project was the Rams, which obviously has come to fruition. Hmm. Now, when when Kroenke told the other owners, if I get L.A., I will indemnify the league so that when the lawsuits happen, I'll pay the legal fees. And the other NFL owners went, okay, all right, give it to Kroenke. Now that Kroenke is coming back to the owners and he's going, hey, this is a bunch of nonsense. One of these two guys, again, the accusation is either Spanos or Davis or both. One of them provided St. Louis with information that we violated some rules of relocation. That's the, 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 the crux of their lawsuit. OK, and I don't think I should have to, to pay these legal fees for everybody anymore. And the owners, the NFL owners, here's their response. We would never have given Cronky L.A. If he did not indemnify us, mm. if Cronky would have if Cronky would have said, I'm not paying for the lawsuits, we're all in this together. Then the NFL owners would have said, no, you're not getting L.A., which means they might have given the Chargers and the Raiders L.A. If I had to guess, I'll just put it out there. If I had to guess, who would have been the responsible party for feeding St. Louis information that they needed to have this lawsuit? One man comes to mind. One man. Mark the master that. of disaster himself. Mark Fabiani. You talk about one guy who would play dirty and who would know the legalities of the situation and would try and undermine the Rams' move into L.A., I could see, I'm, I'm theorizing here, I could see Chargers lawyer Mark Fabiani feeding the city of St. Louis, here's all the rules that the Rams are breaking, here's the lawsuit you're going to have against them. Cronky walks in and tells all the owners, I'll pay all the lawsuits, I'll pay for all the legal fees. All the owners are like, great, you go do it. We'll give you L.A. And they gave him L.A., and now Cronky wants to change it on him. And there seems to be a lot of anger amongst the owners. So I don't know how this is going to go down, but it this is big and dirty business. You know Me? how it's going to go down? However, Jerry Jones wants it to go down. And right now he's defending Stan Cronky. You know, you're going to let Stan Cronky be cheap about it, then he's going to win. Because everybody from the report, Robert Kraft, the Mara family, the Chiefs family, the Hunts, yep. everybody's like, we're not paying for this. We're not paying for that. Then Jerry Jones is like, wait a minute now. You know, let's not forget who Stan Kroenke is. He's been great to us. Mm -hmm. You know, his family has got a lot of money. So if Jerry Jones says we're paying, then they're paying. I think we may now have a lead in who released these John Gruden emails. We, we, may, have, we may have a tree to bark up. Because if yeah, we're talking retaliation and they don't know who did it, but you do have some suspects. I mean, who had access to those emails? I mean, I, I feel like this story is about to start going in full circle here. That's a great connection, by the way. I mean, is think it, about I'm it. To, I'm having a hard time putting two and two together here. What do you mean, Browner? So if you're saying by what you're by the account mm -hmm. of what you're saying, Stan Kroenke 
was basically set up in the lawsuit by either the Chargers ownership or the Raiders ownership, correct? Possible. That's certainly the accusation, I think. I'm reading so if, between the lines. Right. So if Kroenke believes it was the Raiders and someone from Mark Davis's camp who did this, once Mark, once Stan Kroenke's people got wave of these emails, he went, oh, time for a little payback. Hey, that coach you got? Listen to these emails, New York Times. Is that far-fetched? Not I for me. I think so. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't, <laughs> Scott, Scott's already zeroed in on Mark Fabiani. That's why. It's, you know what I mean? Like, he, well, he, I think also, I mean, I just don't know that that every NFL club had access to these emails. I don't know. Oh, every NFL club. Oh, what? Come on. They're all in it. They're all in the emails. Mm. Yeah. This wasn't emails between John Gruden and Bruce Allen. This is 650,000 emails of everybody that any we, anybody ever associated to Bruce maybe, Allen. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're we, right, brother. Maybe, and maybe this, guy, this guy, Pash, that was like the intermediary for the NFL. Yeah, the NFL. He's like implicated in those emails too. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, maybe you're onto something here, Browner. Maybe maybe it was the Raiders, and maybe Cronky was like, this is going to be my way to get back to him. But but if it was the season. But if it was the Chargers, maybe this would give Cronky an opportunity. For the show if it was to, the Chargers. Say say again. It's better for the show if it was the Chargers. Yeah, it'd be much better for the show. I would love that. Actually, Cronky throwing Mark Davis under the bus sounds great too. It listen, rich guys fighting about money and lawsuits, it's all good and sexy. We'll have more on it as the story develops because it's something we're definitely gonna keep our eyes on. Lots more to come. We're in the seven mile casino studios here on Kaplan and Crew. Great friends, we welcome you back to the Seven Mile Casino Studios here of Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. And I want to say to everybody listening on the radio airwaves of 1090, 50,000 watts blasting from San Diego, north to Orange County, through L.A., well into Ventura County and Santa Barbara. For all of our radio listeners, happy to have you guys along today. To the heart and soul of our show and what we do, I want to say to all the YouTubers out there, happy to have you guys here. Make sure you're involved in our YouTube chat. Thumbs up. Comment down below. Get involved in our whole YouTube channel. And for anybody that's going to catch up to us tonight on television, Channel 4 San Diego is our home base. We're part of the Cox Your View Network. Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 118 in Orange County, 118 in Palos Verdes, and then back to Channel 4 if you happen to be in Santa Barbara. And for those of you that are in Santa Barbara that watch us on TV, Hit us up on Twitter at Kaplan and Crew. Come visit our website, kaplanandcrew.com. I love hearing from everybody up in Santa Barbara. So, Grande, Brown Man, yes. Harrison Fagan is about to join us. He's the managing editor of silverscreenandroll.com. This is the SB Nation website that Alex does his Tuesday Laker podcast on, Taco Tuesday. And uh, I can't wait to hear what Harrison has to say about what the Lakers did or didn't do last night. I don't know if we're going to focus in on the Lakers losing after having a 26-point lead against Oklahoma City, who got their first win, or if we're all going to just focus in on Russell Westbrook and his antics at the end of the game. Uh, Alex, opening thought before we get to Harrison so that he hears where we're all coming from. What do you say about last night? I am uh, completely unpanicked. I am more disappointed in Russell Westbrook's belief on the state of basketball. I think I was, I, I was disappointed that he is that guy, the unwritten rule guy, which I despise in baseball. I did not know Russell Westbrook was that guy. Apologize for not doing my research. <laughs> <laughs> Browner opening thought so that Harrison Fagan understands where we're coming from. Man, listen, it's time for y'all to pick a lane. Either you with LeBron and you with Westbrook. I'm saying it right now. Okay, you get these 30 point triple doubles from Westbrook when LeBron out. LeBron show up, he got eight turnovers, nine points, one for seven from three. He's just a chemistry dead. Now, all of a sudden, LeBron gone. Look how look, look how hard he playing. Look at the numbers. Look at the numbers go up, huh? Y'all see that? Y'all see that, LA? Yeah, but what about last night? What did you think about last night, though, dog? Well, listen, I did. That's Russ, dog. That's Russ. This is what you get. The good and the bad, man. This is Russell Westbrook. I've watched his whole career. I love Russell Westbrook. I love everything he does from a basketball standpoint. I love it. But this is who he is. You're going to get this. You're going to get this wild, hey, man, I can triple-double chase with two seconds left on the clock. You better not take a shot with two seconds left on the clock. You're going to get this guy. This is the ride, the ups and the downs. All right. Well, here he is, the managing editor from SilverScreenAndRoll.com, Harrison Fagan, making his first appearance of this NBA season here on the Kaplan and Crew Show. Harrison, good afternoon. How you doing, man? 
I'm doing good. I'm I'm honored to be back. I'm glad that I was not just like a pandemic fill in for like somebody who is somebody like more qualified who was just busy last year, you know, with everything going on. So I'm glad to be back. Second NBA season with you guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I, honestly, the unwritten rules thing was hilarious, uh, you know, not just for the reasons that Alex mentioned, but also because, you know, I saw Sam is Fondiari, like Warriors saying he covers the Warriors. Uh, he was tweeting a clip this morning of Russ doing exactly the same thing at the end of a close game against the Kings after getting a steal he ran down and laid the ball in so like it just makes the comments last night of him like oh I don't I don't play that I don't deal with that kind of like you know stuff at the end of the game showing us up it's like okay but I guess it's all right when you do it I mean it's a slightly different situation yeah, but I yeah mean, I've always felt like that stuff is corny you know like if you want to stop if you don't want them to do that then like stop them from scoring you know it's yeah. like if they're going to go for it, then it is what it is. I mean, it's also fine to dribble out the clock, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a problem. Don't you guys, don't, I think we all agree here though, that Russell Westbrook is a personality type to like when he's losing well, as a kid, if he was losing and it was his ball, they were using, he would take it and go home. <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. Like, he, Russell Westbrook to me has always been like one of the biggest sore losers in all of basketball. So it kind of like when you do it, when you think of it that way, it kind of makes sense. Like it's cool if I do it, but don't do it to me. Don't hurt my feelings. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, that would not surprise. I, I could see a little Westbrook, like, walking home with this ball or something or mm -hmm. changing the room, being one of those, like, change the room. I mean, maybe that's why him and Chris Paul have always feuded throughout their careers. They got, like, a little more of each other in them than maybe they either of them would like to admit. Harrison, what was the uh, – when when you just mentioned the clip that one of the gentlemen tweeted – of Russell Westbrook doing essentially the same thing. You're in the final seconds of a game. The game is now considered out of reach. Uh, you steal an inbound ball and you take it home for a dunk. Um, when was that? Was that, well, I'm just curious when he I did that. I believe he recently. was on the Rockets in the clip. So like to, uh, about two years ago, two seasons ago. Yeah. I, I feel like, and tell me if, if you, what you think about this, but I feel like the Lakers and it's, it's the players, it's the organization, it's certainly the fan base. There's this entitled attitude of, we rebuilt our roster, we brought in superstars, this is our championship to win. And when a young team like Oklahoma City makes this massive comeback down 26 points, wins the game, and intercepts the inbound ball, and, and rather than respecting you and running out the clock, they go for the dunk, I feel like if I were in those young guys' shoes, I'd want to disrespect you guys too. I'd well, want to, I, 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 you know what I'm like, saying? You know, the Lakers disrespected them first. I mean, they, they, you know, they were really good in the first quarter. I think they had built like almost a 20 point lead by the end 24. of the first, like when they were actually trying during that game. And I think they got outscored by like 30 the rest of the way through the next three quarters. You know, it, it's just the Lakers stopped playing. That's more disrespectful to me than, you know, anything that happened in the final seconds from Darius Baisley when a young guy, you know, like just is going and trying to score and put the, you know, exclamation point on a win. Like, you know, you should have stopped them over the last hour or so. You should have at some point mustered up that effort and that enthusiasm and that anger. And it's just like, you know, the Thunder also gave them three chances to win in the final seconds. It's like if they're going to go down and like to kind of celebrate their first win of the season and they're excited about it, you know, I don't really have any problem with that because the Lakers completely took their foot off the gas. That's more disrespectful than anything the Thunder did. I thought, well another part of, I thought another part of that game, the guy who dunked had a career night against the Lakers. Like, this, regardless of what you think of the roster, the brand is still the same. It's still the Lakers. And this kid had a career night. Josh Giddy also had a great game as well. Shea had a good game. So this is a celebratory moment. That dead crowd finally had some life in it, and he wanted to finish with a bang. I get that. I 100% get that. To have Russ then make it into a scene, just it, it was just like you, bro, you dog, you. Come on, man. <laughs> they ruined his homecoming, man. I, I mean, I don't blame him for being mad about the way that the night went, and I think that maybe some of that is kind of what boiled over is he was upset with kind of yeah, you know, like you like you just said, like ruining his home cut, like his home. That was not how he saw his return to Oklahoma City going with this team on a night that you know he's the number one option. LeBron's out with injury. Like, okay, I got this, guys. I'm going to take us home, and you know, have again like a really good first quarter and mostly a mostly decent first half. But it's just they all completely stopped playing in the second half, especially. 
actually. Like it was the last couple minutes of the second quarter. And then for almost the entire second half before they had their late rally to kind of bring it back a little closer and they re-engage, but you can't do that when LeBron's not playing. You can't like this team is not good enough yet. They're not established enough yet. The chemistry is not there. The offense has not been good enough that you can just stop playing for an entire half of basketball five games into the season. All right, we're talking to Harrison Fagan. He's the managing editor of SilverScreenAndRoll.com. And, uh, and hopefully I'm using the right title. Am I using the right title, managing yeah, editor? Yeah, managing editor, using... editor-in-chief, senior producer. I have a lot of time. I'm a man yeah. of many titles. <laughs> managing editor is fine. I am in charge. <laughs> I'm the boss with the hot sauce. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, I'm the boss over there. That's, yeah. that's good enough. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, Harrison, who do we blame? And I know it's only five games into the season. But forget about two and three. Two and three, whatever. But to be up 26 points, to take your foot off the gas like you've documented, should we be blaming Frank Vogel? Should we be looking at their veteran players? This is why they got Carmelo and Rondo and Dwight and and Russ. I mean, th- that was that was the whole sell job was we we went out and got veteran players so that if LeBron's not available, we've got other experience. Guys, what I'm getting at is, who should we be looking at? Because after the game, Frank Vogel was like, well, you know, we'll just learn from this and we'll move on, you know? And Anthony Davis was like, learn? He's like, this is embarrassing. AD is always slightly more unfiltered than Frank Vogel, I will say. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, did you see the way he looked at Russ when Russ was saying the whole unwritten rules thing? Like, he was like, "What what are you talking about, man? Yeah, AD keeps it real. It's something that I've always appreciated about him. Like, I don't always agree on his takeaways from some games and whatever, but he very, but he always puts the onus on himself and always kind of really seems to let you know what he's actually thinking. He's actually a, often a more reliable kind of orator of like the injury report and things going on in the locker room than like anyone else because he does not speak in coach speak so much. And, you know, as far as blame for last night's game, you know, I, I mean, it's it, to some degree, it's injuries, right? Like LeBron was out there missing, you know, Taylor. Horton Tucker, they're missing Kendrick Nunn. They're the, those are their fourth and fifth highest paid guys. Whatever you think of this roster, and no matter how good you think those guys are, like that was part of the depth equation that this team thought they were going to have. Like they should not, how much they should have been relying on 36 year old Trevor Ariza, who has not finished a season in like three years. You know, that is a little bit less kind of forgivable to me. But, you know, if you had two young, you weren't, they weren't expecting their two kind of young investments to get hurt right at the start of the year and not be able to play. So that's part of it. But that's said that's this was literally like a historic loss i think espn had the stat that the lakers were like 400 something and oh or something like that when leading by 25 at any point in a game like this was their first loss under these circumstances ever which is insane to me that they've never blown that big of a lead because i feel like they definitely did during the lottery (laughs) years i feel like i watched games like that and so like that kind of broke my brain a little bit considering that this was the first team to blow a game like that because like you said this is a team where they have veterans they trumpeted their depth and they're they're dealing with some serious injuries right now to their team and they're they're down to like basically 10 healthy NBA players, but these guys still should have been good enough to get it done. And they're veterans who should know kind of that you can't just completely, you know, like a young team, this is more forgivable. If this happens, you're feeling yourself, you know, this kind of, these losses happen to every single young team during the course of their development cycle. But to talk about like, this is something we need to go through. We're going to learn from this. These guys are all like 35. They should not have Mm -hmm. to learn this lesson. I disagree. I disagree. Oh, I agree. I, with you. I, totally. <laughs> here's, here's why I think that's going to happen again and probably again, because they're veterans. They feel like once they get up, they start cruising against a team like that. Cause there's a lot of teams like that in the league. The game's over. Like the game's over for them, for Mello, for Dwight, for, for, for Russ, for AD, like for older dudes. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, they're like, the how day. do these young guys not know that you're supposed to throw in the towel? This is so annoying yeah. that they keep playing. How dare them continue to play? <laughs> this game's over for us. Yeah. Let's just get to the end. I think you're going to see this again. Because- sometimes I feel like, Browner, do you like think like sometimes I feel like instead of playing with numbers on their back, they should play with their resumes on their back? Like that's how they act sometimes. Yes. Like, look what I've done. Like when the all-star patches come out and they've got like, oh, three championships on there eight all-star like banners or whatever, like they put on the front of the jackets. They should put that on back of the jerseys. Cause I think that's the way that the Lakers are going to be playing this year. Like, Oh, when we come into the building, it's like, we won the championship. Cause look at our roster. Look at these dudes. But what the, I think they don't understand is a team like Oklahoma city is like, this is a playoff game for us. Cause look at these dudes. 
Like and, you go to Orlando. And they haven't won yet. They were literally, they're looking for their first win. Like, yeah. And they had had, yes. like, I think a pretty dispiriting giveaway the night before. And so Against they were the Warriors. Probably, I watched that game. It was yeah, pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, of course they were motivated. They're like, okay, we are not letting that happen again. And then they get crushed to start the game. And, you know, I, I'm sure that their coach kept telling them, hey, let's just, let's make it a game. Let's chip away. Let's chip away. And, well, while that's, every coach says that when they're down, I think the Thunder really bought into it. And they kept making, like, incremental progress, incremental progress. They really wanted that first win. And, you know, they deserve as much credit as, like, kind of we're giving the Lakers blame because they didn't take their foot off the gas. They kept playing. They still had to go out there and take advantage of it. But, yeah, I mean, that was an inexcusable loss. I don't think it's reason for panic or anything because there are games like second night of a back-to-back teams lose those games. Usually it's not that big of a lead. This kind of stuff happens. I just think that like the idea that it's some lesson for the team to learn from or something like that is kind of laughable to me because like they know better than to just like completely stop playing when they don't have any kind of real momentum established yet. And they don't, they have not been playing well enough overall to just kind of have those nights where they're like, okay, I could tell like, midway through the second quarter they had decided they're like all right we don't really have to try on defense anymore because we're scoring every time down so we can kind of you know take our you, we can kind of take a step back here we're just going to keep scoring and whatever and it just you know it it resulted in what's a your embarrassing loss all right so like obviously yesterday is fun to talk about and it's it's present of mind but big picture like big because I, I i think i'm not anywhere near panic but let's say 10 is you're on the beach and there's a tidal wave coming and one, you're drinking margaritas in the pool and you don't give a damn about anything. Like, where are you at right now? Big picture with the Lakers. I would say like, I'm at like a four because I think that there are there are some concerns. This is not nothing where I'm like completely relaxed. This is all going to get worked out. This is all going to be fine when everyone gets healthy. And because number one, we don't know, like last year showed us, we don't know that there's ever going to be a point when everyone is healthy. I think everyone hopes that because I want to see what this team can be at full strength, but we don't know. And so that's number one. And number two, there's been enough stuff with like the starting big. And I know some of like the on off numbers and stuff don't really reflect this yet, but starting big the way that they have with DeAndre Jordan, who's just not like an NBA player anymore and hamstring your spacing when you're not really getting the benefits of this is something that Alex, that you and uh, the other Alex, the host your show with you talked about the other day is like when you're playing big, you have to get the benefits of it and they're getting out rebounded. They're getting killed in the paint because they don't have the speed to like kind of switch. They don't have guys that are good rotators. And again, like, you know, LeBron playing more of, those small ball four minutes and then mellow down the stretch of some of these games is going to make a difference there. LeBron's a good weak side defender, things like they're going to get more rotations. This kind of stuff is going to likely improve, but they're shooting themselves in the foot to start games a little bit. And I'm not sure that I've seen kind of the overall like cohesion and some of the strategic things that you'd like to see. Again, this team still has to get healthy, but as far as I don't know that they're leaning into the identity that they need to play yet in terms of embracing being a smaller team. And part of that, is having some of these wing size guys out but they they need at least one more kind of this is something that we wrote about at the site last week is that they need one more kind of like Markeith Morris style kind of hybrid four or five type guy like they had last year rather than DJ I just you know or they need a center that can actually play because yeah. it's not him and I that's not the only problem and I, I don't want to just blame all of their struggles on him he's playing like 15 minutes a game but um you know I, I just I've seen enough things where there it's like self-imposed issues that I do have questions about them figuring it out but I'm not like panicking yet last night doesn't have me panicking or my oh, biggest wow. concern is if I don't see LeBron playing the bulk of his minutes at the four I think they're going to be in trouble I, I agree with you in, in that sense because LeBron is a good help defender playmaker He's not a good consistent defender anymore. And it, no, nor should he be at his age. Like this isn't football. Not one on one. No, right. Yeah. He can't do that anymore. But he can make a play late in the game or at, at every time once a half. He can make a spectacular defensive play from the help side. He's like one of the best helps, like win, like uh, like rotators in the league down to that spot. Like he he yes. gets way more blocks than you yes. re- like remember him doing. Yeah. And so I hope that. Anthony Davis leads this team defensively, whether it be through pick and roll, whether it be protecting the basket. If him and LeBron are protecting the backboard, getting rebounds and starting the breaks, I think the Lakers are going to be fantastic this season. What I don't want to see is DeAndre Jordan playing at all. Zero, none, not mm-hmm. give him his check and let him go make movies or whatever it is. He wants write another book, 
whatever he wants to do, go do that, dude, because you can't. He can't play anymore. I thought he was supposed to just be a bench player. I didn't think he was going to be a starter when they got him. I thought that there was a chance because this team has liked their reclamation projects. They like their like pedigree guys that we, Oh, the league gave up on him. We can bring that guy in and look at what he's going to do in this system. But he just, I have not, maybe he gets his legs under him, but I, nope. I don't think that I see it. And so the other he's thing not that JaVale they, McGee. Yeah, I think they're looking no, at him. No, he's not. JaVale right. is a far better player at this yes. point in their careers. And really, like, two years ago was <laughs> and has been for probably quite some time. The The other thing that they're just shooting themselves in the foot on, and injuries have sort of forced their hand with this because of the lack of, like, wings and things like that and the lack of THT, the lack of none. But Russ Rondo minutes are just don't Ooh, work. God, and stop. especially when you have nights where it's Russ and Rondo and they're out. And again, they have a lot of injuries right now. So this is, uh, they may not play these moments. Throw when Dwight in there too while you get help. But when it's, when it's Russ and Rondo and Mello, it's like, it, unless your goal there is to confuse the defense because they can't decide who to target, then like, I just don't know what you're really doing. And, you know, having Monk out there, who's just, you know, he's been fun offensively, but he also is not a very good defender he's not in the tier of kind of the rondo mellow but when you have rondo and mellow on the court like you're just not going to get any stops you're just giving defenses kind of like a buffet of options to pick on and <laughs> you know it, it's just yeah it, it's just little stuff Bad. like that that yeah. i hope they're gonna have to figure that out and figure out that they just can't play russ and rondo together because it's a horrible fit offensively where you're basically wasting one of them you know standing off ball not having the ball in their hands and defensively like they're just too small they're uh, like they're not attentive enough at this stage of their careers to where you can have both of those guys be your point of attack defenders. All right, we're talking to Harrison Fagan this afternoon. He's the boss at SilverScreenAndRoll.com. Official title, the SB, right? The the SB Nation website that covers the Lakers. It's where Alex has his uh, podcast, Taco Tuesday. Hey, Harrison, we got a roll, but I don't know if you know this or not. Congratulations are in order to our man Grande here. You know, he became a homeowner this week. Did you know that? I did not know that. All right. You guys are paying him well. That's that's. I'm I was thinking it. the opposite. I was thinking you were paying him well. <laughs> yeah. It's the silver screen and roll once a week podcast check. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah what, what are we at for you now? Like a million a week? Is that, <laughs> is that your going I rate? I don't like to put my numbers out there. You know, okay, I, I like apologize. Like an I'm NBA sorry. player. Right, yeah. Right. Right. That feels kind of yeah. hypocritical for you to host the sports talk show, uh, be on a sports talk show where you guys talk about guys' salaries all the time though. And you're like, right, I don't want but my not our own. Money. Right. Yeah. But not our own. Yeah, yeah. But it was true. It was amazing. So, uh, so yeah, congratulations. Congratulations go out to our man here. Hey, Harrison, it's great to talk to you. Great to be with you. Uh, love the website, silverscreenandroll.com. Love everything you guys do there. And uh, listen, we will look forward to talking to you many times throughout this NBA season. Fantastic analysis. Stick around, everybody. Lots more to get to. We're going to get to Thursday Night Football and this week in the NFL. Stick around. This is Kaplan and Crew. Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and crew from the seven mile casino studio, seven mile casino.com is the website just minutes from downtown San Diego and Sammy's restaurant and bar serving brunch from 9am to 3pm on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Perfect place for college football, NFL football, poker, blackjack table games, great food, and just minutes from downtown San Diego. All right. Grande Brown, man. Um, I mentioned that we were going to talk some football and we will for sure. But before we do, I would love to just jump back in because it's an ongoing drama every day here in San Diego, and that is the managerial search for the Padres. And I noticed that yesterday after I went on the air and I said that, you know, some people have given me a hard time on Twitter. They're like, hey, idiot, like right away with the name calling. Hey, idiot. If you did two minutes of research about this new pitching coach that the Padres hired, you'd find out. What a great pitching coach this guy is. So you know what? Um, I told this person on Twitter, okay, Mr. Name Caller, all right, Mr. Tough Guy, um, I haven't done any research, and I haven't found out anything about this. But what I do have an opinion on is if you're going to hire a position coach before you hire a manager, whoever you hire as a manager is likely going to be yet another Andy Green, Jace Tingler, yes man for A.J. Preller. Because if a Bruce Bochy wants this job, I'm not so sure about a Mike Socher or a Brad Osmus. Maybe I'm not even so sure about an Ozzie Guillen, frankly, because a lot of those guys just want jobs. Because managerial jobs in Major League Baseball, 
especially with talented rosters or at least a talented core, they're hard to find. And by the way, you make a lot of money. And even if the Padres don't pay managers big money, you still make a lot of money. So my whole point about this pitching coach in relation to the managerial job is when you hire a coach before you hire a manager, that tells me that the general manager is not, is not about to cede control of the clubhouse, the dugout, coaching staff, and team to a new manager. So again, one guy tweets me and says, you're an idiot, do some research, find out how in demand this guy is. But yet, after we put out a bunch of content yesterday on social media, I've seen a lot of people come up with, I agree with what you're saying, that they're going to go cheap again when it comes to manager. They're going to go puppet again when it comes to manager. And hiring a pitching coach before hiring a manager should be telling us that. Maybe I'm proven wrong. Maybe it's egg on my face. I'm very happy to be wrong. I have no issue with it at all. But um, apparently, the Padres have now officially hired the pitching coach, who has spent 20 years as the assistant pitching coach to the Cleveland Indians. But one thing I did read about him, for the guy that called me an idiot for not doing my research, the one thing I did read about this gentleman is he's had a lot of influence in the minor league system. So not just a major league assistant pitching coach, very influential in the Cleveland minor league system, which I haven't done any research on to tell you if the Cleveland minor league system is worth a crap. But here's what I can tell you. This goes back to last year, this last baseball season. Remember the story I told you? We all thought Max Scherzer was coming to the Padres. Max Scherzer ended up with the Dodgers. The story I told you that I got from somebody inside the Padre organization, very close to A.J. Preller, was this. The Padres had the Scherzer deal like 99.9% .9 of the way done. And then Scott Boris, the power agent in baseball, called the Dodgers and said, hey, you know, the Padres are about to get this Scherzer deal done. And the reason that Boris did that is because, again, this is according to a Padre official whose name will remain off air. This guy told me, Boris was unhappy with the way the Padres were treating Eric Hosmer, his client, and he was very unhappy with the lack of development for Mackenzie Gore, the top prospect in the Padre organization, another Boris client. So Boris leaked to the Dodgers that the Padres are about to close this Scherzer deal down. Well, if Mackenzie Gore hasn't been able to make it to the major leagues and they've been just working with him in Arizona, Maybe this new pitching coach is less about the major league pitching staff, maybe, maybe, and more about developing minor league pitchers. It's the only thing I can think of as to why you would go hire this guy now before you have a manager in place. So, fellas, I'll throw it over to you guys. What do you make here of, of yet another day of the Padres' search for their next manager? Which, by the way, is like the only juicy story happening in sports in San Diego. We'll get to San Diego State versus Fresno State, but that game's going to be played in LA. This is like the mm -hmm. only juicy, sexy, remotely sexy story. I mean, again, we're talking about the Lakers. That's what everybody's talking about in LA. Uh, they're still trying to clean up from the Dodger mess. They're getting ready for the Rams, even though the Rams have a terrible game this weekend against Houston. Uh, there's still the USC story with their coach. I mean, there's, there's a lot of storylines with our friends up in LA, not a lot here in San Diego. So I'm throwing it over to you guys. What do you think? I think we've, this idea of hiring this guy, I think we hatched this out yesterday and kind of got to the bottom of it from each person's perspective. I, I, I think this is a, we are in a holding pattern and I, I don't know how much longer this, this should take. I don't know what they're waiting for unless they're trying to hire someone on the staff of the Astros or the staff of the uh whoever they're playing um the the braves unless they're trying to hire someone from those two staffs what's the hold up because they said they don't want it, to it's been reported that they don't want to hire ron washington who's a, a base coach for the braves they're waiting for him now <laughs> so what's what are you waiting for that has to be the hold up either ron washington's the guy and they don't want to say it or they're dragging this out for no apparent reason other than to make it look like we did this expansive search, but we hired 
Google this guy's name and find out he's he's been in the closet of someone's organization for five years and now he's our manager. Get to know him. I know that we've been talking about this for a long time, and I don't want to diminish everything that we've said about what we've said about the Padres manager search. I will say this, and I have concluded this last night, and I know this is like, um, I don't know what you guys think about what I'm about to say, but I don't care who they hire. <laughs> <laughs> that's it okay that's sweet. okay that's sweet. i like it. it i like yeah. it because like of it. what we said earlier and i stand by i think i feel like i lost track of it but i'm back on the on the wagon i don't care what they do until august and september of 2022 but this should is we feel the same way about direction. is it should, should we feel should we feel the same way important? hold on should we, should we but wait, let me ask you a question should we feel the same way about the lakers we we here we are talking about the lakers two and three they blow a 26 point lead nobody's panicking there's so much that has to be done should we not even be looking at the lakers until they're at game 42 Dude, basketball season starts on christmas man we all know this. okay all right this so then season. so then baseball so then baseball season's not going to start until the play, after the all-star break here's why I have a little backup to what I just said. A, I don't care. Right. B, it doesn't matter because the manager's already here. We've already seen it. Okay. He's going to go out and add some guys, get rid of some guys. He's going to bring in this pitching coach. He's going to get this hitting coach. We're going to do third base coach. We're going to get a first base coach. Like all these coaches in the roster will be filled and it won't matter. We could be the off season champs again. You know, every, I, I, I think like, <laughs> I, I I just get so frustrated by by people on social media, which is not real life, but it's like, why are what are we crowning ourselves for for the hiring of Ruben Yebla? Like, okay, he's a great pitching coach. Awesome. Doesn't matter. Win in August, win in September, make the playoffs. That's what matters. So whoever they hire, I don't care. I officially do not care who they hire. I won't slam it, I won't praise it until August of 2022. I like it. I like the patience. I do. I do. It's like, like it winning the matter, off season, guys. Like, right. Cause because winning the off season in baseball is like winning the summer league in basketball. And you know who wins Ooh. the summer league in basketball, the Sacramento Kings. Mm -hmm. They're like the summer league champs, but they can never win during the regular the Baltimore season. Baltimore Ravens, I believe are 18 and 0 in preseason the past, whatever years. And they haven't won a, a Super Bowl in that time. So it just doesn't matter. You can go out there and be 30 and 0 after April, and you could be 60 and 0 after May. Then you can tank in June and July and August and September, and it won't matter. So, my belief, my really overall thought, and I, I came to this conclusion last night, is it really doesn't matter who they hire because the manager is already here. And that's AJ Prelly. I have, I, I have, I have to admit, um, I've really grown to not like AJ Preller more so than ever before. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. I mean, like, I find AJ Preller, it's probably not him. It's probably not even his fault. It's probably Peter Seidler's fault. And before that, it's it's probably Ron's fault. Um the fact that the Padres have given AJ Preller so much power when I remember him being hired and they were, they were selling us on him. That's kind of what the Padres do. They always sell you, you know, but I guess it's not that different than any other franchise in sports. Right. right? I mean, let's face it. The Lakers have been selling you Frank on Vogel. this new roster. They've been selling you on this coach, right? They, they've been selling you on this rebuild and Browner's why they did. selling you on Herbolt, 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 you know, it's a sell job. Browner has been selling us on, on Justin Fields. Yeah. Come on, man. Listen, some things sell themselves, Brad. Some things sell themselves. <laughs> Don't do that. But but I really have grown to dislike AJ Preller because and, and again, I'm not positive it's his fault. It's just that he has so much power in this organization. And I just ask you to go back into his history and just show me the track record of success that says this is why we handed off this team to this guy. You know, early in in his career, it was nobody works harder. Nobody scouts and scours the world for talent like this guy. Nobody thinks, eats, drinks, and lives baseball like this person. He's he's a baseball savant, et cetera, et cetera. They, they were trying to sell us on that. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are all these years later, 
There's one postseason appearance in the shortened season. So for everybody that says the Dodgers 60 game season and their world championship, put an asterisk next to it. Okay. Then treat the Padres the same way. They had one good year in a sprint rather than a marathon. This and when year they, they would have been good too. Say that one more time. This year they would have been good too after 60 games. Yeah, right. Exactly. Play me 60 games, which is a baseball season I prefer. Play me 60 <laughs> games and we got ourselves a ball club. Oh, yeah. You know? But uh, but 162 Contender. games, yeah, they, they, they can run the 10K, but they can't run the full marathon. And so it just bothers me that A.J. Preller has been so celebrated, particularly by the franchise and then by the fan base. Like, in A.J. we trust. Still? To this day, you still believe that? Right. And it just irritates me and annoys me because you're right. Put a uniform on the guy, okay? Take his skinny ass, all right? Take his basketball crap talking ass, put him in a baseball uniform, and why spend the money on a manager like any other business? Like, I, I, hey, you know what? Do we need to hire a manager for this restaurant? I'm the owner. I mean, you know what he's not, Scott? Manager? Tell me what he's you not. You know what he's not? The term that everybody loves in football. He's a lead. He's not a leader of men. Ah. Mm. That's I don't think a lot a of baseball. I don't think a lot of baseball GMs are right. Uh, they strike me They're as the more, nerds. Yeah, they strike They're me the as awkward. More upper management office can't. I'm I'm the guy in high school that they walked past and wouldn't high five in the hallway. Like, <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. I know I know what to do here. I know right. what the I know what the game is, but. I can't go in a locker room or a clubhouse and I'm tell an alpha. grown men how to act. Right. You know, I can't tell Manny Machado and Fernando Tatis stop yelling at each other. That's I've never physically outdueled a man in a sport, so I don't right. have that alpha in me. So let's stop calling the next Padres manager a manager. Unless let's it's Ozzie Who's Unless, the leader or, of men they hired? Bruce, or, or if it's Bruce Bochy. <laughs> Bruce Bochy, Bochy. Ozzie Guillen, I'm in. God, it's not going to be Bruce Bochy. Let's move on. No. It's not. No. It's not. Not, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. I, I would think that if it was Bruce Bochy. It would have already been Bruce Bochy. Yes. Well, I think so too. I think that if, if look, Bruce like, Bochy was interviewed not long ago in San Francisco on a television channel. Yeah. I don't remember which channel it was, you know, what, one of the local affiliates, right? So, so presumably Bruce Bochy had been in San Francisco for whatever it was, 10 years. He won three world series championships and he got a lot of relationships. So the television channel that he must have had a relationship with said, hey, Boach, can we do a Zoom with you and get your opinion on the Giants, the Dodgers, whatever series it was at the time? And Bochy goes on and, and is Zooming, and the, the guy says, hey, man, have you uh, heard from any of these, these teams? And he said, no, I, honestly, nobody's called me. I haven't talked to anybody quite yet. You would think that once the Giants were eliminated, that's when you would have pounced on Bochy or when he would have been ready to make a move because otherwise he was still the Giants manager, and if they were still alive – you know, he, he's kind of a classic now, a legend in San Francisco. He'd still be talking about the Giants. Everybody'd still want his opinion. And if he was the Padres manager, they may have been like, oh, all right, whatever. Now he's the Padres manager. I'm just saying that if 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 Bochi was going to be the guy, once the Giants were eliminated, you would have thought that it would have happened quickly thereafter. I'll I'll maintain this opinion. If I'm proven wrong, so be it. Hiring this pitching coach tells me Bruce Bochi is not going to be the manager of this ball club. Yeah, and if it's if it was going to be Bruce Bochy, you're not waiting to interview Ron Washington, which is kind of what Kevin AC was hinting at in his article today. So okay. if it's Bruce Bochy is your man, you're not waiting to interview Ron Washington. You're not waiting to interview any other assistant or whoever. If Bruce Bochy is the guy you're going to get, you're going to get him, and they don't got him, so they're not going to get him. AJ Preller okay. said he was going to have a manager before the GM meetings November 6th, and now he's like, yeah, it's not looking too likely. So he's waiting for, for his what? next manager, Ron Washington. It's got to be Ron Washington. It's got to be. He was a finalist last time. He was probably the guy they should have gone with last time. I probably, probably. would have been a little bit more excited last time. But now it's like, so he wasn't the guy two years ago. What makes him the guy now? That's gonna. You right. should and ask that question this, at the press conference. Is this another? Is this another one of these AJ Preller Texas Ranger relationships yes. yet again? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think the first so question. World Series. The first I, question. I, right. Did I miss something? Are the Texas Rangers the Yankees? Did I miss no. something? No. Uh, but I will say that the first question, 100%, which will be from Hack, no, not Hacksaw. That's who does the first question? Marty. No, it's like Bob Scanlon. 
he hmm. won't ask that question. No, he don't. He, he uh, would never dare ask something that's not 100% pro Somebody partner. has to ask that question within the first five questions. Mm -hmm. Kevin if A. Ron, if Ron Washington wasn't the guy five years ago, then why is he the guy now? Or yeah. two years ago, excuse me. Why is he the guy now? Mm. Before we move on, though, Scott, real yeah. quick. Yeah. Fire watch update. Hey, oh, breaking news. Oh, what the heck? The video. Uh -oh. stuff. Okay, yeah. here we go. Anyways, okay, fire watch. Mm -hmm. The Padres recently let go of two employees who had been with the organization since 2013. Pitching development director Steve Lyons and strength and conditioning director Dan Burns. Adios. Fired. Bye. Right. And this guy, Steve Lyons, helped oversee the minor league pitching, which didn't get it done, which couldn't get Mackenzie Gore to the major leagues. So enter stage right, Ruben Niebla. Am I saying his name right? Niebla. Niebla. Okay. Stay faster. All right. Hey, let me do this real quick before we uh, before we keep moving on. I want to tell you about an email I received from a longtime great friend of the show. And this guy started emailing me back in January of this year. And this gentleman had told me back in January that he'd been a fan of the show from you know the very early days and was just devastated when 1090 went off the air and et cetera, et cetera. And so anyway, this guy, he's just been a long time listener. He's been involved. Like every sponsor we mention, he supports. The guy's been great. Um, as as a listener. And 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 so he sends me this email today. This was literally this morning, 9 a.m. this morning. Listen to this email. He says, yo, man, you got me again. This is what he tells me. You got me again. I started my membership at I Thrive MD. I took a T shot and an NAD shot. And he said, by the way, that NAD shot kind of burns on the way in. Yeah, there's a little sting. I, I admit it. There's a little <laughs> sting, but come on, you're tough. He says, anyway, I just wanted to comment again on how your approach to plugging your sponsors works like no other. Here's why. He said, I've been listening to you for over 20 years. I feel like I know you to a certain extent just from listening to your rant for so many years. Then when I hear you promote products and services of your sponsors, it's believable because of the long, long-standing one-sided relationship. Nice job with the show. Keep it rolling. Tell Browner and Grande I said, what's up? Great friends. And this is from a gentleman named Michael Ambacher. And Michael is the chief operating officer and the general manager at a company called Original Trout. <laughs> Hey, Michael, thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Um, in, in a Jim Harbaugh voice, appreciate that. I Thrive MD. Here's a guy who's over 40 years old, who's feeling like he's not as strong as he once was, feels like he's not getting, I don't know, Michael, if this is your deal. I don't, he's not getting the job done in the bedroom. He's feeling kind of foggy. He's feeling a little bit depressed. And what did he do? He heard about the 50% deal. He heard about $289 a month for testosterone treatment taken down to $145 a month for testosterone treatment. And he went, why would I not try it now? And this is what I keep telling Dr. Damani, by the way, fellas, it takes 90 days for the great friends to believe in you. Like, hey, new sponsor. Okay, 90 days from now, let me see if they're still around. Let me see how committed they are to the show. Once the great friends find out that you're not going anywhere, they're like, okay, I'll support this. I want to try this. 289 is testosterone treatment, $289 down to $145 for your first three months. And I'm trying to get Dr. Damani to extend this through Thanksgiving. Call this number, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497, or ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan, ithrivemd.com slash Kaplan. Guys, make your appointment. You're going to feel like that young, clear-minded, strong guy that you were years ago and you're going to get back to being that, and it's going to be half price for the first three months. So take advantage. All right, fellas, coming up, I want to talk about some college football. There are some really big games coming up this weekend, including San Diego State, who is on the national radar now. Uh, there's a big game coming up against Fresno State. We'll get to that. And Cameron Azir, our intern at Syracuse University, will have a full college football report for us. Then I want to get to Thursday night football tonight and take a look at what's ahead this weekend around the NFL. So a lot to get to. Just don't have as much time. Stick around. We're in the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. Coming right back after this. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Great friends, we welcome you back to the 7 Mile Casino Studios here of Kaplan and Crew on a Thursday afternoon. Fellas, I hope you're feeling good today. Uh, I'm feeling really, really good today. I will say I did not feel good last night. Remember yesterday, guys, I was telling you about going to see my doctor and him giving me a shot for shingles. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that yesterday. Well, my doctor cautioned me. He said, um, hey, when you take this shingles shot, uh, you may experience flu-like symptoms. 
Mm-hmm. And last night, dude, I went to this this concert, Dead and Company, down in Chula Vista, and I was miserable. Oh my god, I was so miserable. And I was with three other dudes, and I didn't want to tell anybody. Like, oh my god, I'm not feeling well at all. Um, I would really rather go home and get into bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I had a terrible headache. I had chills, like I was freezing. They were all laughing at me. We were walking into the concert. I put on a hat, like a, a beanie, like, like a beanie. I had in my pocket. So I was wearing like a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, and then I had a jacket on and then I put on a beanie and they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? It's not cold out. Like, I'm like, no dude, I'm freezing. And it wasn't because it was cold. It was because I was like shivering, Mm -hmm. like flu, like shivering. And then in the middle of the night, I was sweating my balls off, dude. So I went from shivering ice cold at this concert, dead and company, Mm -hmm. which I love John Mayer. And I love that he plays with dead and company. But I will say last night, at least the portion of the show that I saw, like I need sing along songs. I need songs that I know every word to that I can sing all the words. And they were just into full jams last night. They were like in their own zone. And I was freezing and I was miserable and I was ice cold and I was shivering. And then I got home and I was sweating my ass off. Now I feel great today. I got rid of the headache, got rid of the chills, got rid of the sweats. But you shower. Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not a big uh, Grateful Dead guy actually don't probably can't even name you one song at the top of my head so mm-hmm. yeah I, I i know no interest or history with the grateful dead i'm yeah. the anti bill walton yeah no it's interesting to, to look at the crowd because there's a lot of people my age and older people that have been longtime listeners and fans mm-hmm. of the dead and then there's a lot of young people that are john mayer fans how many original members are, are still remaining on the um, i would on the squad probably like two or three i mean the, the main guy is a guy named bob weir Mm-hmm. Um, and he's kind of the main dude who was like the number two guy. And so he's still there. And, um, it's interesting to watch too. Cause he's probably in his mid seventies, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to my buddies last night. I'm like, you're looking at a guy in Bob Weir on stage who, if you go see the Rolling Stones, you understand that this band has been around since the sixties. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's the exact same thing with the dead. Mm-hmm. Now, granted there's different pieces that have come in and out of the band. But the, the main guy that's still keeping the band alive, he'd been there the whole time. So you're looking at like an all time classic American rock and roll superstar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, for uh, sure. But I was miserable last night. Oh my God. And shingles. See, I didn't know anything about shingles. Still don't. But yeah, me neither. But I know this. Like you guys, I Googled him yesterday and I saw people. Why? That, don't do that. What do you mean, why? I told you yesterday, we don't do that. We specifically said, don't do it. I know, but you guys understand I took a shot for something that I don't even know what it is. Yes, me too. We all did. The COVID shot. What Dude, what I, did you find? What did you find when you looked it up? I found here's what I found, Browner. Good Gross question. Here, here's what I found. Whatever that is that's on the internet that's called shingles, <laughs> I don't want that. I yeah. told you. I do not want that, man. Oh, yeah. I'll take COVID. I'll take the flu. I'll take listen. I do not want shingles, bro. You know, I'm thinking and about getting funny. the old booster and flu shot co- cocktail. Really? Yeah, thinking about it. Might just. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm gonna do it, but I don't know when. I told you when you see the shingles images on the internet, you will take that. You will run and take that shot. Period. <laughs> it scares asked, you into asked, taking it. Yeah, I asked you if I could get it now because it looks terrible. Like, is and it an age thing? Frightening. I, listen, dude. I don't know. All I know is this: is that this is my this was my point about the COVID again. vaccine. This was my point about the COVID vaccine. The COVID vaccine. People are like I don't know what's in it. I don't know what the long term effects are going to be of the COVID vaccine. Okay, that's fair. Guess what? Um, I don't know what's in the. Uh, I don't know what's in the shingles vaccine. I don't know what's in. But Minnesota. here's. But here's what I do know: I don't want shingles. Because I looked on the internet and I saw people with shingles mm. and it doesn't look good. And now that I've been mentioning it to people, I was like, last night I was telling my buddies, I'm like, yeah, I don't feel that good. I'm like, I, I took this shingles shot, you know. Plus, Browner, you said to me yesterday that once you took the COVID shot, you went right into partying because you oh, were, yeah. you know, right. So last night, yeah. you know, we're drinking tequila, you know. Yeah, buddy. And uh, we're going to this dead show and we had a party bus, four dudes in a party bus, right? Damn. So, very God, comfortable. Y'all need some Damn. friends. We need chicks is what we need. Yeah, y'all need some breasts. <laughs> but we need three. We have three <laughs> married guys. 
we we have three married guys and 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 me. You bring know, those and, boobies. Oh, well, it was it was a guys thing last night. Oh. And uh, bring those boobies. Yeah, you know, we're drinking we're drinking tequila. There's there's other stuff happening, you know. Oh. And and um, well, those kind of buses. And I'm like, dude. I am not feeling good at all. I tell everybody I took the shingles shot and every guy who's older than me, they're like, Oh dude, you don't want shingles. <laughs> you do not want shingles. And, and people who've had shingles, they're like, Oh my God, I had it. Like Alex, the other day when we were at your new pl place, one yeah. of the gentlemen who works for Gary Cooper, mountain trust, he told me he had shingles and he, he's like, dude, it came over my head, down my neck, over my face. He's like, it was the most disgusting and painful thing you've ever seen in your life. So not only was it horrible to look at, but it was insanely painful. Yeah. Uh, what are the risk factors for shingles? Uh, here are the people likely to get shingles. 50 or older. Okay, check. Uh -oh. Under a lot of stress. Check. Check. Have cancer, HIV, or another disease that lowers your body's defenses. No, no I'm going to check that. Have had a serious physical injury. I'm not going to check that. Take long-term steroids or other medicines that can weaken your immune system. Nope, not going to check What's that. What's a box. steroid, though? What but do they consider a steroid? Many people who get shingles mm -hmm. don't fit into any of these categories. <laughs> Oy vey. Oy vey. <laughs> I'm going to go get this. That's shot encouraging. Too. Yeah. Damn. Apparently, hey, by the way, you know, you Damn. have to get it, you know, unlike the COVID vaccine where you know you go back two weeks later and you get your second shot mm -hmm. with shingles. It's within like six months, and it's not like two weeks later. It's it's like, hey, six months later, we'll see you. You'll right. get your next shot. Interesting. I mean, there's definitely something in there. Yeah. Oh, man. All I yeah, know is I was reading this thing yesterday called uh, the about... shingles.com. No, it wasn't shingles. Like, I, I let that go until today. <laughs> there's like the, the health experts are worried about something called a twin demic. Mm -hmm. You know, even dealing with a pandemic, mm -hmm. which is just one. A twin demic would be like if multiple babies being that born. we're all out and about doing the thing and. And COVID spreading, and then also on top of that, flu spreading too. They're calling it the possible twin demic. Okay, so I took the I took the flu shot and the shingles shot on the same day. Mm -hmm. I was eligible for the uh, booster, yeah, the Pfizer booster, and I also need to take a tetanus shot, which I don't really feel Ooh. like I need. What is know? tetanus? Tetanus, I think. I Rusty think. Nails like Google this. Of that nature. Yeah, like I right, like like. If you're, let's say you're climbing an old rusty fence and you cut your hand, you know, you may, yeah. you may get something. And I think that. like if a rat bites you, you got to get a tetanus shot as well. Like yeah, dog bites, like yeah. animal bites. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I've encountered a rat. Tetanus is an about. infection caused by bacteria called Clostridium tetani. When the bacteria invade the body, they produce a poison toxin that causes painful muscle contractions. Another name for tetanus is lockjaw. It often causes a person's neck and jaw muscles to lock, making it hard to open the mouth or swallow. Mm. All right. I want that shot, too. <clears throat> what else can we get shots for? I mean, this is isn't this kind of the funny thing, though, is that anybody who's anti-vax, who's already taken like all these other shots for all this other stuff. Yeah. You know, like, like, let me just say you got to take a shot for tetanus. See, like this is like the COVID argument, like, right? Like how many cases of tetanus are there in the United States per year? I don't know. But this uh, is why they aren't that many. A thousand. Really? That's not a lot. No. I, I, I'm telling you right now. It's I, preventable I, by a vaccine. Yeah. I will take the booster. I, I took the flu shot. I will take my second sh shingles shot. Have you heard shot. about... I know I keep interrupting you with the boosters. Have you heard about the cross... Uh, I don't know what the right word. I'm going to say pollination uh, of the uh, shots that they recommend. No, what's that? Which makes no sense to me whatsoever. But let's say I think we all are Pfizer here. Maybe. Yeah. We're on team um, Pfizer. So if you got Pfizer... Mm -hmm. If you get a Moderna booster, mm -hmm. your your antibodies mm -hmm. grow significantly more than if you go Pfizer, Pfizer booster. Oh, come on. I'm not doing that. Come on. Oh, dude, I might go get all three. Come on. Give me a break. I might go Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J &J in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. I'm ready. Man. I'm ready to have a regular old school winter. I'm going to Texas. Where there's no laws for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Oxnard for Christmas. I'm going to party it up and club it up for New Year's. Like, I'm going back. So I'm going to go shot, shot, shot. Like, I'm going to fake shot, information. Shot, 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 sh
who's a U.S. naval officer. He's done the Pfizer Moderna deal back and forth. He he's doubled up. Military. He probably should have. Yeah, he doubled up. Yeah, he's like traveling to like Afghanistan and right. He probably don't you like when you get deployed, don't you gotta take like like a dozen? Oh, you shots don't get a, for, and you don't get a say, by the way. Yeah, right. They just, they just pump you up with stuff. They go stick yeah. your arm out. You go, why? Because I said so. How mm -hmm. many people are gonna be mad on the chat about this segment today? Really? Oh. You guys are promoting the booster. If it works, then why do you need a booster? <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't take the booster, works, right? Why does your child I had, need a booster seat? I had four I listen, I had the choice of four shots the other day. Flu, booster shingles tetanus. tetanus so when I you go back flu for and booster and it took flu and shingles but you just said you're gonna get the booster i guess right? i mean you're this far you know you're two-thirds I mean, committed you, you know, might as well you know, go all the way right and, and the, the booster rather than having to go back to my doctor to get the booster apparently at the del mar fairgrounds which oh by the way oh i don't, I don't know if anybody's talking about this at all i know we'll talk about it next week do you guys even know What's happening next week at the racetrack, Del Mar? It's opening. Halloween. The races. True, true. Halloween is coming up. But then the race is open next week. That's right, Alex. Wednesday of next week, I think it's November 3rd. But do you know what's happening on Friday the 5th and on Saturday the 6th? The Breeders' Cup. The Breeders' Cup is back. And I don't know if it's me or if you guys tell me. I don't know. If, I feel like the first time the Breeders' Cup was here in San Diego, there was a lot of buzz about it. Yes. You know? And I'm not sure that there's the same amount of buzz right now. And it could be that, you know, back then, 2017, we were still at the original 1090. We were doing a lot of work with the racetrack. I'm still doing work with the racetrack, uh, obviously, through the horse racing stables. Mm -hmm. But but um, I don't know if there's quite the same kind of buzz. I think that community was on fire about it. And because it was such a large event, the rest of the surrounding areas got on fire about it. I think this time around, the community is excited about it, but that enthusiasm hasn't reached outside that community yet. You might. I be would right. say give it, give it to like Tuesday. Yeah, you the might Padres be right. should announce their next manager at the Breeders' Cup. It's a good idea too. Good Cross idea too. pollinate again. Hey, look, you know, listen, I, I've driven through downtown Del Mar in the last few days. I'll, I'll just, I'll take a time out here and tell everybody. You know, I've talked about this on the air. So I had a, a flood in my house. All of the hardwood floors in the house buckled. The whole house needs to be torn apart. They need mm -hmm. to sanitize the mold under the house. They need to tear up the floors and dry what's underneath the house. And then eventually they're going to have to put in new floors in the house. So I have been desperately trying to find a place to move to. Um, With because, any success? Well, a little bit here and there. And um, so I've been driving through Del Mar because I live in Solana Beach and I've been looking on like Zillow. I've been looking on uh, VRBO, Redfin. Airbnb. I mean, I'm looking on all these different places to find short term rentals. You know, I got to find a place for me and my daughters to live. So I've been driving through downtown Del Mar. And if you drove through downtown Del Mar, you'd say, what's going on here? These guys are ready for the holiday season because every streetlight, the whole I mean, it's like three miles in, in the strip. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it's two miles, whatever. The whole town is decorated for the Breeders' Cup. And and as I'm looking for a place to rent because I'm going to have to move out of my house, as a matter of fact, the movers oh. come this Saturday. The movers literally come this Saturday. They're going to pack up my house. They're going to move everything into a pod. Then me and my daughters are going to move to a condo somewhere. And I'm renting a condo for like, I don't know, however long it's going to be. And so... Um, Do you have a view? I haven't. I don't... I, <laughs> I, do you have for, do you have internet? That's what I care about. Yeah, right. Th these are all the things I'm I'm dealing with right now. So I so I I did sign a lease. I signed a lease to rent a house in Carmel Valley. Um, but I'm now looking for a place to work out of. You know, it's kind of anyway. Long story short, I'm driving through downtown Del Mar, and I can see that they're all decorated for the Breeders' Cup. And when I was looking for these condos. I was hearing from these owners like, hey, you better hurry up because I'm getting a lot of people that are coming in from around the world that last minute need a place for the Breeders' Cup. And they're coming in from wherever and they want to stay for two weeks. So it's been a, it's been a little bit of a headache. But again, I signed a lease to stay in, in Carmel Valley for, uh, for the next however foreseeable future. But what a pain in the ass this is, man. What a <sighs> headache. I know. Mm -mm -mm. I know. Well, at least headache. you caught it. At least the house didn't like collapse within its it's own or go into like a sinkhole. That's true. Oh, sinkholes are bad. Yeah, sinkholes are bad because you, uh, you don't know when they come. 
right. would just come. And if you got a leak under your house and it's creating all this disaster, I mean, you had your your kitchen countertops snapped in half. Dude, dude I'm not joking. Like, like an earthquake. The, the 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 countertops in the kitchen are are these big blocks of wood, and they snapped. They just snapped. And and I was like, what the hell's going on in Did this you house? Blame one of the kids. I, no, I I was like, something's weird's going on. So the first one snapped. Then the second one snapped. I'm like, okay, this is not just some weird coincidence. Then I noticed all the floors buckling. So what happened is the floors were moving and it cracked the countertops. And dude, you have no idea how much damage is in the house and how long it might take to fix. Yeah. So anyway. uh, kind of related, but not related. Mm -hmm. So you remember I told you guys like, so I bought this place in North Park, but uh, you know, like you get to go in there and you're in there five, 10 minutes and they're like, hey, do you want to spend? all your life savings here after five or 10 minutes. And you're like, yeah, I'm down. Here's an offer. And it gets accepted. And then you don't go in there ever again. <laughs> until they, they the like accept your offer and then be there for the walkthrough, the inspection. I was in there yesterday getting things delivered and Cox came over and, and all, whatever. And now that I've been in there for two days in a row, I'm like, well, that needs to get fixed and that needs to get done. And this needs some pain. And this like, what the hell? I thought it said turnkey. They're not turnkey. Yeah. I got things to do here. Yeah, like I do. got like drywall that needs patch and I need some paint. Like Did you need to take that lighting fixture immediately out of the way. Yeah. I that ran right into go. it, by the way. That yeah, thing you're go. not the only one, but yeah. yeah. Well, hey, Multiple listen, this, this this gives me a great opportunity since we were just kind of BSing about nonsense here for a minute. Gives me a great opportunity to say, A, thank you to Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services and his entire team who I got to say really worked tirelessly to get this deal done for Alex and his fiance Mar and to get them uh, into their first ever home ownership opportunity. So many people in San Diego think I'll never be able to afford a home. I know people that are my age that have kids that are like, my kids will never live in San Diego. They're going to get done with school and they're going to have to move to Phoenix or they're going to have to move to Austin, Texas, which is not, not cheap either. Or they're going to have to find another part of the country to live because they'll never be able to afford a house here in San Diego. And it's not it's not just the the payment, it's the down payment. It's like, how do I accumulate this much cash? You know, especially when rents are so high. So congratulations, Alex and Mar, for finally becoming homeowners. Uh, this took a long time. There was a lot of handholding that went on from Gary and his team at Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. And from, from getting your credit scores right to getting pre-qualified for a loan to scouring the county for where you wanted to live, to finally finding the right place, making an offer, getting it accepted, to then having Mar change jobs the week of, of the closing of escrow. I mean, all these speed bumps along the way, they found a way to finally get it done. 858-376-1299 for Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Gary, we appreciate you, pal. And thanks for all you did for Mar, for Alex, their crew, and, uh, and becoming first-time homeowners. It's really awesome. All right, coming up. Our man Cameron Azir is going to be here. He is our intern at Syracuse University, and he is going to do a college football update as we head towards the weekend. Now, speaking of football, you guys tell me, I was looking at the NFL schedule tonight, Packers Cardinals. What a monster game this is, you know, seven and zero Arizona, six and one Green Bay. But Alex, you were talking about this yesterday. Green Bay had a bunch of guys out because of COVID like star players. Yeah. And now Arizona is going to have no more JJ Watt probably for the remainder of the season. Yeah. Yeah, not only that, I mean, I told you guys yesterday it was Alan Lazard and Devontae Adams, and now today they've also ruled out Marquez Valdez-Scantling, I believe. So top three receivers out. So, you know, now I'll be looking at Rodgers throwing the ball to Randall Cobb and other dudes. Like, there's a guy named, like, Iquermonious St. Brown. Yeah, it's going to be dude. That sounds like heard. a church. And <laughs> J.J. Like Watt, private school. <laughs> yeah. according to uh, – Adam Schefter, J.J. Watt has to undergo shoulder surgery, which is likely to cause him to miss the remainder of the season. Wow. And the Cardinals yeah. just went through their whole COVID thing because Cliff Kingsbury didn't coach them. Right. Uh, Car uh, Chandler Jones missed the game because he was put on the COVID list because he's not vaccinated. He was a close contact. So, yeah, it's uh, COVID is still sticking its head out here and there, man. How long is COVID was... going to hurt the in a, hurt professional sports? Forever. Like, I think so, too. I think I, think, I, think I heard, this, this will be a forever. I thing. saw a Berkeley doctor say, "Like this is it. This like, is this is now life forever." Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. COVID is something you didn't hear about two years ago, and now you'll hear about it for every day for it's the like, rest of your life. The next is like the flu. It's back hey, forever. you know, I, I was looking at the NFL schedule this weekend. Steelers Browns in the 10 a.m. window. That's a game I'm interested in. Um, after that, 
the one o'clock window on Sunday, Patriots Chargers is a game I'm interested in. And on Vikings, Sunday night, Cowboys, Vikings Cowboys Woo! is a game I'm interested in. I, I will admit that. But I got to tell you that the schedule this week is not particularly sexy. So Thursday night, there's a great game, even though there's all these guys missing. Sunday, you got the Steelers and the Browns, which I really like a lot. Um, and then the Chargers and the Patriots is an interesting game. Otherwise, it's not such a hot week around the NFL. We'll talk more about that. Let's get to some of the big college football matchups, including San Diego State. We'll get to that next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. Final segment of today's broadcast here on the Mightier 1090, those 50,000-watt airwaves from San Diego through Orange County, north of L.A. into Santa Barbara. Happy to have all of our radio listeners with us today. To all of our YouTubers, you know who you are. You are the heart and soul of this show. We love you guys. We appreciate you. We're glad you're involved in the chat. For people that will catch up to us tonight on TV, Channel 4 San Diego and Channel 4 Santa Barbara, in between 118 in Orange County and Palos Verdes. To all the TV viewers out there, part of the Cox Your View Network, happy to have you guys here as well. And again, here we are. It's Thursday. We're coming up on the weekend. A lot of you guys will catch up on the audio podcast on Apple or Spotify or wherever else. So uh, make sure you stay tuned with us and, and keep in touch with us, especially during like this time where you're listening on a Saturday to something that happened on a Wednesday. Make sure you contact us and let us know on Twitter at Kaplan and Crew. All right, guys. Um, Let's talk a little college football, and then we'll get to the highlight of the day, man. And then coming up at the top of the hour here on the radio, we'll get to the charity stripe tonight. But Cameron Azir is our intern at Syracuse University. He's a San Diego kid. He's studying broadcasting sports journalism at Syracuse. He did a great job for us all summer. He's still working with us. And Cam is here today with our college football report presented by BetUS. If you like wagering, on NFL games, college games, MMA, horse racing, crazy prop bets. BetUS is the place to go. BetUS.com is the website. 1-800-79-BETUS is the phone number if you need help setting up an account. And if for any reason this wagering stuff that you're having fun with becomes a problem for you, make sure you call 1-800-GAMBLER. If you mention our promo code 1090, you get 200% bonus when you're using crypto, you get 125% sign-up bonus when you're using regular straight cash, homie. And so uh, use betus.com if you're into wagering on football games. And here's Cameron Azir back at Syracuse to talk some college football here on Kaplan Crew. What's up, Cam? What's going on? Good to be back. Uh, I, I know I skipped over a week, but I, I promise I'm here. I'm here to stay. And yeah, <laughs> the, the weather is getting a lot worse if anyone wants a weather update in the Northeast. And I uh, just have to start wearing a lot more coats and jackets. <laughs> well, uh, I was telling these guys, I was down in Chula Vista last night for a concert and I was wearing a puffy jacket and a, and a hat and people were like, dude, it's not that cold. And I'm like, I know I'm freezing though. I am. I'm, that's the way I am, man. I'm a tropical brother. You know, it, it happens. It really does. And you're talking about wagering money. I'm not as gutsy in that regard. That's one thing that I wanted to say before we got into this college football report. Uh, I feel like I'm the type of person to, you know, let it just kind of subside and just talk about it with my friends, um, you know, freeze in the process. But yeah. Yeah. Not, not putting your money on the line, huh? No, I'm not that type of person. I wish I was because, uh, you know, I feel like I'm at least somewhat knowledgeable in the sports world that I could make good bets. But then again, uh, whenever I've made a bet, it just doesn't work out for me. Right. Well, that's my problem too. I was four for five last week in my NFL picks against the spread. Had I bet all of those, okay, I would have lost every one of them. Yeah, I mean, I was in a, I'm in a pool with my, with my grandfather, uh, for, for the NFL, and one week we went two and fourteen with spreads. So, <laughs> wow. I, say I'm, I say I'm knowledgeable. I, I think <laughs> that we would have done better if we would have went against our intuition, which is well, just. Listen, really cool it's like going to the racetrack. You know, sometimes I sit there and I study all the numbers and I think I know who's going to win, and then my girlfriend goes, "I like the color of that jockey's <laughs> silk. I'm going to bet on him. She wins, I lose." Yeah, I, I remember when we were at the racetrack and, and Browner was like, I'm going in. I was like, Browner, I trust you. I'm going in with you. It didn't work out. But hey. Browner, you helped, no, you helped us all lose money, Brown. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. That's what we do. We just we donate money to the track. It's a great organization. <laughs> hey. It does great things with animals. So, you know. It's the it's it's the only charitable thing I do during the year. <laughs> I go to Del Mar and I give to the horses. That's what I do. That's it. You just do what I do, man. You just, or uh, Cam, you could just uh, 
just like give all your money to your liver. Go to this track and buy Del Margaritas and enjoy yourself, dude. That's where you put them. That's a real investment right there. Yeah, okay. that's right. See, I'm, I'm waiting to be of age. I'm waiting to be of oh, age. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you should just right. fly that's to like fly to Europe, man. You're you're pretty close. Don't you have yeah, a fake ID? Doesn't everybody in college have a fake ID? I, I think a lot of people do. I don't. That is a confession that I will make. I don't have a fake ID. I mean, this guy's six he foot four. Doesn't I mean, have a fake easily, ID. He could easily pass. Yeah, he could easily pass yeah. for twenty one. Come on, give me a break. All right, Cameron, let's Canada. let's jump in. Let's let's jump right in here. Um, start us off with San Diego State versus Fresno State. What a monster game this is. We actually were talking about it earlier in the show. In 2017, San Diego State was six and zero. They had back to back home games, Boise State and Fresno State. That was the year that they were going to go undefeated and they were going to disrupt the entire college football system. You know what happened? They lost to Boise and they lost to Fresno. We're all kind of waiting. It's just sort of the way we're wired for San Diego State to, to have a trip up along the way. I hope it's not this week because if they can get past Fresno State, that's another one of these um, speed bumps they got to get through to, again, try and disrupt college football. What can you tell us about San Diego State versus Fresno State? Scott, it's a roadblock for San Diego State. Many would say that the win over Air Force, that was the game where the Aztecs proved that it can go undefeated. An Air Force team that was 6-1 and one in San Diego State handed them their second loss. San Diego State, like we've mentioned, is 7-0. and oh. Their best start since 1975. Yeah, 1975. You do the math right, Browner, Scott. I know you love my timelines. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm giving them to you. Best start since 1975. The biggest roadblock is against Fresno State, a team that sits at 6-2 and two on the season and, and is really jockeyed by Jake Rayner at the quarterback position. You look at the graphic or even everyone you know listening on radio, these are two teams that play similarly but have different identities. For San Diego State, they score 31 points per game. Fresno State, 36. That's third and second in the Mountain West, respectively. On the defensive side, San Diego State, that's where their identity uh, you know, uh, lies. Allows 16 points per game on the defensive side. And then for Fresno State, allows 21 points per game. Those are both top four in the Mountain West. These are two teams that control their own identity. Fresno State on the offensive side, San Diego State on the defensive side. In fact, the Aztecs haven't given up 24 points all season. And on the Fresno State side, this is a team that averages over 350 yards. So you're looking at two teams that are similar, but their identities are different. For San Diego State, you you know, luckily you have it at home. Luckily you have a chance to move to eight and know you have the home crowd behind you you're 21st in the country but you talk about a roadblock fresno state provides it because that offense is dangerous hey i'll tell everybody who's listening on radio come to our youtube show because cameron built these really great graphics so you you know all the things he's talking about those of us that are watching on youtube and those of us that are watching on tv we're seeing all these graphics but on radio you're not hearing them or i mean you're not seeing them but they're they're really sharp looking and they really do tell the story of this game. So let's all make a prediction here. Grande, you're our San Diego State homer. You got your Aztec gear on today. Yeah. Give me a prediction on this game. Uh, overtime win by the Aztecs. Browner. Overtime, bro. Listen, listen, listen. Not I nine overtimes. Who went on nine overtimes last week? It ain't going to be like Illinois that. and Penn State. It was right. disgusting. That should never, that should never happen again. I think, I think Fresno State beats him. Hater. I think I think this oh. is where it happens every Hater year. The there's house. one there's one trip. I'm just saying, dog. I'm Hater just in saying. the house. Okay, I'm just saying. All right, Grande's got Aztecs in overtime. Browner says this is where Fresno State pulls the upset. Uh, Cam, what do you think? You know, I'm not really impressed by San Diego State over the past couple of weeks. Uh, a six point overtime win against San Jose State, only you know a six point win over Air Force, only putting up 19 and 20 points respectively. Now, where San Diego State is going to win this game is on the defensive side of the ball. What they did against Air Force, holding a team that averages over 350 yards of offense to just 192, impressed me mightily. And when you're talking about Fresno State, it's a team that banks on its offense just too much. San Diego State, number one ranked defense in the Mountain West. I know I'm throwing all these statistics out there. It just goes to say San Diego State's going to win this game. It's going to be on the defensive side of the ball oh. because Greg Bell has struggled as of late. 
uh, you know, rushing the ball following that injury just a month ago. Give me San Diego State. It'll be a single digit contest. I have the Aztecs by eight in regulation. Not wow. San Diego State's a one point favorite. And just by the way, Cameron, you talk about them having the home field advantage and the home crowd behind them. You know, like the Chargers who used to play in the same stadium, Dignity Park Health, Dignity Sports Health Park. Um, here's what's going to happen this weekend. There's going to be no San Diego State fans there. I mean, maybe a, a thousand or two thousand or three thousand, whatever. And you know what's going to happen? Fresno State's going to bring a lot of people to this game. You're crazy. You don't think so? No. <laughs> what do you think? What, what do you think, Alex? I think there's going to be like two thousand people there total. Like think, always. See, I actually think Fresno State will bring a bit of a. I'm not talking ten thousand. Okay. okay. What I'm saying is, is that San, San Diego State's going to have a very small crowd, right? And Fresno State is going to bring people, and so I don't know that there's any home field advantage. Yeah. But I will game. agree with Cameron on this. They haven't impressed me either, dude. Like they're they're not a very impressive looking offense, but I do think that the defense had, like I said, they have one formula: run the ball well and play good defense. If they trail, if they fall behind 14 points. And kiss that game goodbye. Like they're gone. They're done. Yeah, I think I just was looking. I, I don't know why, but on my calendar, I think I have like that it's Brady Hoke's birthday. I don't know. Today? I, I don't know. It's not today. It doesn't seem to be on my calendar. Today. It's hey guys, it's my birthday. <laughs> hey guys, pizza night for my birthday. Not really sure. Um, okay. I'm gonna take San Diego State to win the game. I do think it'll be a hard fought game, but I think San Diego State wins the game in regulation. I'm going to call this a 24-21 kind of a game for San Diego State. So, listen, here's what I'm hoping for. I just hope San Diego State wins the game. You know, because when we look at the polls, Cameron, we're talking to Cameron Aziri. He's our intern at Syracuse University. He does a college football report for us each week, brought to us by BetUS, BetUS.com, 1-800-79-BETUS. Cam, when you look at the polls, last week my Pitt Panthers beat an unranked Clemson team and jumped over San Diego State. Um, yep. You look up at the top of the polls and you see Alabama jump over a team like Oklahoma who struggled really, really hard last week to just get by a team like Kansas. Um, so I don't know, even if San Diego State wins this game, I'm not sure where they go in the rankings. I think that San Diego State moves up one spot if they win this game. Why Alabama jumped Oklahoma is because Oklahoma didn't impress against Kansas. Cincinnati, if they have one more bad week, a 27-20 to 20 win over Navy, it's not going to get it done. If they have one more bad week, they're going to drop a few spots. If you're San Diego State, you're in the rankings because of pity. Just, just because of pity. Yeah. This is a team that's 7-0. and You have to put them in the rankings. It's not like the Aztecs have any extremely impressive wins. So, yeah, when you look at the rankings, all this does for San Diego State is at least pushes them toward a Mountain West Conference title because Fresno State, San Diego State, top two in the West Division in the Mountain West. So all this does for SDSU is just pushes them toward a conference title. Does Oklahoma have any losses? Oklahoma does nope. not, right? I don't think no. Oklahoma's no, no, Oklahoma's not. Oklahoma's unbeaten. Does, right, here's my whole point. But Alabama has a loss. Right. To a bad well, team. Welcome to the to a not good team. Welcome to the committee, also known as the Alabama supporters. I mm -hmm. mean, Alabama is traditionally great. So if Oklahoma has a poor game, Alabama beats a team like Chattanooga. Well, Alabama impressed and Oklahoma didn't. So that's just how I can't goals. wait for Alabama to be number one so they can lose in the SEC championship <laughs> game and be number four and still win the national title. They're it's going to happen. Just by the way, though, I mean, like Ohio State's fifth, they're six and one. Um, but Michigan is is number six and they're seven and oh. Oregon is six and one. They're number seven. And Michigan State's seven and oh, and they're eight. So it's it's not as if there aren't teams with losses. Uh, hey, right. look at, did you guys know? Did you guys know that Wake Forest is seven and zero this year, and they're ranked number thirteen in the country? Right, but but they also just gave up fifty six points to Army. So yeah. I, I think what the committee is doing well this year is basing the rankings off of results. In the past years, it's well, this team's undefeated or this team is the highest prowess. 
They're actually basing it off of results, which I like. And that's why Georgia is so far ahead of the pack at number one and why there are a few teams like Oregon, even as a one loss team, creeping into the top seven. Earlier this week, ironic that that fits Alabama's situation this year. And it didn't but like I just find it really ironic that this year, yep. this year, it's how you look. No, and they're not watching the games, by the way. Listen, all, all you need to know about San Diego State and their ranking and Cameron's right. They don't they're there just because they're undefeated. Just the same way earlier, I showed you the map of the undefeated teams and we didn't know who the hell the roadrunners were. Yeah, yeah, the you, University of Texas, San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're like, no, and they're, they're yeah. 23rd. Yeah, right. Exactly. They're one spot behind or two spots behind San Diego how about, State. How about SMU? SMU 7-0 and and they're number 19 in the country. Two spots ahead of right. San Diego yeah. State. Like, go well, Cameron, we'll, we'll talk next week, man. We'll, we'll, we'll get into more college football as the weeks go on. It's our college football report with our intern Cameron Azir at Syracuse University presented by BetUS. Cam, have a great time this week and uh, we'll talk to you next Friday or next Thursday. I appreciate it. All right, dude. All right, there he is, Cameron Azir out at Syracuse University. Uh, good kid, man. He's done a great job for us interning on the show. All right, Grande, uh, as we head towards the top of the hour, let's get to today's highlight of the day, man. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day is brought to you by Story Holistic, where you're going to get 20% off if you spend a minimum of $75 and you put the promo code in boobies, B, triple O, B I, E S. Spend 75 bucks, put that promo code in, 20% off. It's that easy. It's that easy. And also, that uh, promo code only runs for three more days till the end of October. And also, right. from now until the end of October, if you spend 100 bucks, they'll give you a $20 gift card to use in November. Scott, you Which like it's truly amazing. It's yeah. it's really amazing. You know, like you walk in, you spend a hundred dollars, you mention boobies, B O O O B I E S, you get twenty percent savings because you used our promo code. So you take that hundred bucks down to eighty bucks, and then after you do that, then they're gonna give you a twenty dollar gift card to be used next month. So you save twenty dollars on this purchase, and the next time you go in, you've already got yourself a twenty dollar gift card, and you can throw the promo code on top of it. So you're saving a lot of money, which is why great friends, when it comes to cannabis, whether it's it's you know CBD for pain or whether it's something to help you sleep or it's just something for fun and recreation, great friends go to Tory Holistics. Grande, what's our highlight of the day? Man? Highlight of the day? Well, it's not really a highlight of the day, but did you guys know that Facebook just changed their name? Yikes. I did see this. Now, Facebook has changed their name to Meta. Yeah. World Peace. peace. <laughs> oh, I'm blocking Browner. Sorry, dude. Uh, <laughs> Facebook announced on Thursday it's changed its company name to Meta. Now, it's Facebook, the company no, name, right? So, like, right. when you go to Facebook... It's not Meta.com. Yeah, or it's not, like, the Meta app. Right. The company of Facebook right. has changed its name to Meta. What are they doing with this whole... Um, what What do they call this now? Where is, is it called a, the Metaverse? Yeah. What What is this virtual reality world that Mark... Zuckerberg I thinks we're know, all going to live in. I don't know, man. I don't know. He's got enough money to fail with one of his ideas. Yeah. I know. I talk to people who think that everything he touches turns to gold and they're like, you don't get it, dude. Virtual reality is the future. And I'm like, okay, look, I mean, I get it that yeah, I see demolition, man. I get it. I mean, look back in the day, <laughs> there, there, there's, there's a famous video of, I think it's Bryant Gumble and Katie Couric. And they're the hosts of, the Today Show. This is oh, I know you're talking that clip. about. Yeah. yeah, this is like really pre-internet. You know, what is internet? They're like, what is the World Wide Web exactly? What is this? And and this this internet thing. What do, do you even know? What it really even is? And and so that video is very famous because back then when that conversation was happening, television, newspaper, radio were our primary forms of media. And now, obviously, the world has changed so much. But but I don't. I have to admit, I'm going to sound very old school here, and and you know, not caught up to speed. But I don't know what the metaverse, virtual reality world is. I yeah, know. I just kind of saw that. I wasn't really. I don't either. Of the day, so I don't know. I haven't. I actually don't have any information on. It. I knew. I, I knew that they were changing their name. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was today. I just yeah. saw it I, on Twitter. I have a virtual reality machine. It's mm -hmm. awesome. I'm an Oculus. It's great. I use it like once a month. So I have a friend of mine who uh, 
has these virtual reality goggles, you know? And he's like, Dude, you got, yeah, he goes, you got to check these out. So I check them out. And like one time, like we're climbing some mountain, some famous mountain, you know, uh, one time is like full blown porn, you know? Nice. Uh, I mean, dude, like no a thanks. full, like congratulations, like 10 chicks, everybody's naked and me, Woo. you know, and how'd that work out for you? Well, I mean, I'm in his living room and he's sitting next to me, but I got the Ew. glasses on. Yeah. So it was, you know, nothing's really, cause he was like, dude, you got to check this out. And you put porn on. He's like, dude, you need to see this on virtual reality goggles. It's the most incredible thing you've ever seen in your life. It's like real. It's like really real. You look down, you're like, that's not me, but you know, what browner? You think this is weird? It's very weird. Bruh, you was in a room with another man and he put on virtual reality porn. And only I was watching. And you were sitting next to him. Right. right. What? No you want to watch though. soccer porn? Here's my highlight of the day. Last okay. night, the goal of this, I look like that transition. Uh, yeah, very good. The goal of the season in MLS happened with the Portland Timbers. Darian. Is the season over? Ospria. Over the top. Ospria on his horse. Marcinkowski spills it. Ospria. Oh, my. Overhead kick. And scores. An that incredible goal. That was amazing. That, that was, was incredible. Dope. That yeah. was incredible. So what happened was the goalkeeper comes out, tries to make a play on the ball, loses the ball. The player then gets the ball, kicks it up like over his head, and then bicycle kicks it over the goalkeeper into the goal. Amazing play. Amazing. Wow. Is that hard to do? Yes. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. What? You you don't have an appreciation for great sports moments just because no, it comes I don't from know. soccer? You don't, oh, you, you see that every day? Really? <laughs> no, I'm asking the question. I don't know how high level of skill of a play that is. Because I don't watch Hi. soccer. I you, don't know. You think, you think it's weird that I'm sitting there with virtual reality goggles on, watching porn, sitting next to another man, but you as a sports fan don't have any appreciation for what a brilliant goal that was? I don't know why you were trying to draw a correlation between the two things. but I don't know. I'm picking it up tomorrow. Hey, radio <laughs> listeners, <laughs> here, comes, here comes the charity stripe. <laughs> and for everybody else, we'll have a separate ending for you. Peace out, radio listeners. All right, guys, wrapping things up on a Thursday afternoon. Now, Grande, explain to me and Browner, you said that you know you got to have the day off tomorrow. I don't have to have the day off. I'm planning ahead. Um, Wait a minute. Stuff. What? I'm confused now. I thought you had to take it off. I mean, yeah, I I think I do because there's a whole team of of people going to the new spot when we do the show. Mm -hmm. Now the thing why I mean is I don't know if I have to. Is it could take ten minutes or it could take eight hours. I don't Just know. Just show up over there, let them in, and then come back and do the show. I can't do that because, like, I need to be there to make sure that we can do the show for the rest of time. What are you doing? Are you working with Cox tomorrow at your new yeah. place? Yeah. 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 They got to get on the roof. Mm -hmm. And so HOA has to let them in on top of the roof. Oh, you're already a pain in the ass of that new building. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> All right. So tomorrow, Alex needs the day off. And this is, look, I'll, I'll just caution everybody who's still with us right now. We so appreciate you guys being here every day. And I know you guys get a little testy with me when we're, we're, we need a day off here and there. But, um, you know, Alex is moving and he's got a lot going on. So he needs a day off tomorrow. Me and Brown are going to do the show tomorrow. We'll have Jason Lawhead fill in for Alex and we'll have a good time tomorrow. And, you know, Fridays are usually shortened shows anyway. So Why are we even doing a show if you have to get out of your house? Me? Don't you got to pack? No, I'm not packing anything. Oh. I'm not packing anything. For Saturday, the movers, Saturday, the movers will come. They'll pack up all the bulky stuff, couches and tables and beds and all that kind of stuff. And then when I move into this new place in Carmel Valley, um, I'll just take my clothes with me. Now, the question ultimately comes down to, and I've been talking to this company called Service Master, who's about to do all the work here. The question is, can I stay in this room and broadcast every day? Mm -hmm. So I'm still working that part of it out. But um, And then next Friday, a week from today, I need the day off. Because I'm going to see the Canelo Alvarez fight in Vegas on Saturday. And, dude, getting flights to Vegas, very difficult to do right now. And expensive as hell. That's, um, that's not good. You, are you going private? No. If I was going private, it would be no issue. Not. Oh, that's true. I'm just taking Southwest. Yeah. And it's yeah. expensive. And, and there was only, like, one seat on, like, a 9 a.m. flight. And so by the time I get up there and figure everything out and then – um, and then Saturday's the fight and then I'll be back first thing Sunday morning. So I was planning on staying Sunday cause I, I was told I had an invitation to play golf with the champ on Sunday. And I don't, I don't really want to play golf. 
Mm. What? You're so weird, dude. No, the truth of the matter is, seriously, truth was, of the matter is, I was gonna couldn't, say. Couldn't, get, couldn't get a flight back on Sunday. Could not get a flight back. And fly back Monday. Yeah, whatever. I, 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 it's too far. You know what, dude? I got to move out of my house this weekend. There's too much crazy shit going on as it is. So to even leave to go to Vegas for a weekend, Friday and Saturday night, is a total headache. You play know? golf with Canelo? I know. I can play with him here at the Del Mar Country Club. I don't need to play with him up there. Actually, actually, it's not true. It's actually not true. It's actually not true. Actually, not true. I can't play with him. I can't play with him at all. You know why? Because they wager way too much money for someone like for me to get into that game. Oh, we were betting real money. I thought we were just like betting. Like that's you. Like oh, we're betting real money. I thought we were just kind of saying like oh, I'll bet you a million dollars. At the end of it all. At the end of it all, when I owe when I owe Canelo ten grand, you know, and then I tell him oh Canelo, I didn't think this was for real, you know, then he's gonna be like um. Give me my money or I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah. Let him punch you in the stomach. I don't know if you guys just caught that. I got to rewind the tape. I just smacked their shit out of a fly. I, I'm like fucking Daniel's son with the chopsticks, dude. Really? There was a fly on my microphone and I just went, <laughs> caught him right here. And I just see, I see it on the ground over there. Nice. <laughs> Damn, the skills, dude. Nice. Skills. Good luck tomorrow, Grande. Uh, Brown, me, you, Lawhead, we'll hold it down tomorrow. If anything afternoon. changes, I'll do the show. I just don't know. I don't think it okay. will, but I. All right. Yes. All right. Um, have a great day, everybody. We're back tomorrow. Until then, peace out. Bye.